Welcome back to our fourth and final set of the day here in the Smite 2 Founder Series. Last chance qualifiers. We are in North America for our second and final game of the day over in North America. Gore, we saw a three-game set to start off our night. It's a win for Garf's Goblins, and Dest, their mid laner, said, yeah, it could have been two. We trolled a little bit around the, uh, the Gold Fury. Another good one, though, here between a couple recognizable teams, and, and this one is do or die. If you win, you go on to playoffs. You lose. You're headed home. Won't be seeing much more of you. Uh, and so that weight builds up a little bit extra here at, uh, as the evening rolls through in our Smite 2 broadcast. Yeah, I'm really excited to, to see where this ends up going, especially for these two teams. When you have this amount of pressure on you, you have the best of three. There's like, I don't even know how to explain the energy. There is just so much kind of relying on it and, and making sure that everything goes not perfect, but, but as solid for you as it could. Well, a quick reminder of what we've got going here in the North American uh, Last Chance Qualifiers. We've got ourselves four groups. We're going to show you everything, or a couple of matches, <laughs> from uh, from Group A and Group B here today. Group C and Group D will be tomorrow. So it, it'll be similar, where tomorrow we show you one of the uh, semifinal, I'll call it, games in Group C and Group D, and then we'll show you one of the final matchups between those two teams. So two more North American matches to be broadcast tomorrow. Uh, but for now, we're looking towards this Alec hate club. <laughs> I mean, I guess hate is, is the pathway to power, right? That's what the, the Sith say. So if you're basing your team around anger and the hatred of Alec, whoever that is, the only Alec I know in smite is, is fine. Okay. Um, I've learned this because I had the same thought because I was in the exact same spot. Uh, and when asked in the past, their mid laner's name is Alex. So, okay. so there is a second Alec. Uh, it is not, admittedly, it's not as fun as drama filled as it possibly could have been. Right, right. Some guy who's not on our team at all. One of the one of the goats. We we hate you. Um, and he's like, okay, I guessed. Um, well, it's funny. By the end of like Smite One, it got to the point where we were just calling players by their first name. We sort yeah. of blurred those lines, you know. Um, I don't know. The Fino was always just Fino to me. I, I knew him as Alec, but he was always Fino to me. Uh, anyway, that's a personal anecdote, and not one many people care about. Let's get into something <laughs> we do care about. It's picks and pans for game number one. We're in a best of three here. Winner moves on. Loser heads home. Allocate Club going up against Father's Day. And wouldn't you guess it, Gore, their solo laner named Father of Four. They're fun. <laughs> I'm guessing that's why their team is called Father's Day, but uh, but who am I to impose? Uh, Baron Samdi banned once, picked once, picked an un unpicked unbanned in game three of our previous set. Allocate Club sticking with what they know, and that's a Baron ban in game one. And, and honestly, I... I... I'm still on the fence about the Baron bands. If I'm being completely honest, I think it depends team, you know, to team. Maybe there's a, a world where this is like a, yes, you have to get rid of it. And it is in fact that, that big worrisome problem. But I just feel like I've been seeing a, a lot more of a lack from him. That being said, he's a safe band, right? Like he just feels like someone that, you know, you can get rid of and feels pretty solid. Like, some of the others that, that you would think of in the last few weeks that have released, like Sobek, I could see warranting a ban. Ra hasn't necessarily shown the the, the reasons oh, to I need to be banned. Same oh. thing can be then said for what Hercules, Danza. Like neither of them are like, oh my god, they have to be banned. Hercules maybe in that first week, but he was already comp banned, so you didn't have to worry about it. Nowadays, he's he's kind of a shell of himself, and so I don't mind it when your your allocate club ban it so that that Father's Day don't get it and then grab yourself something that is incredibly strong, force them to ban something else. And no matter what, you're going to get a strong God. And I, I like the moves that they put in the and I totally agree. Well, the strong God gore is one that was banned out in all three games of our first set. It's the Zeus, which is so funny because for the first like two or three years of me casting Smite, Zeus was like untouchable in a bad way. Like terrible pick, never want to see it. End but of Smite 1 started to see a little bit more. Anyway. And now apparently Gord's one of the more strong picks in Smite 2. And that was the thing that was actually fun to talk about and, and really kind of examine again about the, the aspects of being in an alpha more than anything. Like you're now in this spot where this got like, it, it go a month ago, Zeus was dog water. Ooh, like was nobody was gonna lock him in. He was gonna get bullied and camped. His damage wasn't great. 
and, and now all of a sudden you know chain lightning feels sand. really good your ult maybe isn't damaging a lot but really what you're looking for is the detonate charge off of that into again chain lightning the the dps that you can do uh, around a lot of your abilities are remembered. pretty massive and so it is something that's fun to see just where the balance goes it changes a lot it's something that you got to keep up with father's day i think that they're going to be ahead because of this we actually got the the glory i think last week i got to watch father's day play no and lrn in, in mid lane was really artists. really fun to watch and now you get something powerful on that i, I think it's going to give a lot no of trouble to renown and, and a lot of others on allocate father's day burst damage name of the game here bologna jingwei zeus later in the game be tough to deal with and even a little bit with athena we, we've seen athena do plenty of damage if uh start to build a little bit into it time to go to work glad we don't see a triple adc the the triple adc we saw in our previous game wasn't the best but it's still gonna be double adc and a lot of physical damage gourmizer uh here for alec hate club hercules throws a bit of wrench in the mix followed by an odin here for father's day so what's the name of the game for alec hate club amaterasu on her cern herc physical damage and then yeah i guess you got a sobek who could deal a little bit of magical damage is it enough though do you can you just itemize against it if your father's day yeah the thing that alec hate club have going for them is displacement or right? like sobek pluck hercules knock up like they've got the cc and the team fight capabilities which at times we've actually seen overpower and overcome the the like you said maybe the the fact that they are mostly mostly physical but when you go to the other side and, and you look at things I guess a little more well-rounded overall, right? It definitely is going to leave things and maybe lean towards Athena in the jungle. You've got the setup again. Team fight is going to be there. Zeus, early on, chain lightning. If you get a taunt that, that, that you can lean on behind that or in front of that, I should say, then you're going to be able to get the job done and you're going to do more than enough. But realistically, I think that, that like you said, maybe stylize or itemizing into just some simple physical defense in fact you can go pretty heavy i mean on her kern and ama are gonna be auto attacking more often than not yeah the abilities are still pretty impactful but if you go to itemization like we actually just saw in game three of the last set you're gonna be feeling more than fine here i think of your father's day there's a lot of ways to, to try and counter this the downside is is that this is a comp that i think early to mid can really flourish, right? They've got a good amount of damage in the, the, the Ama and the Herc. You've got good displacement that, that can lead into early leads for an on her and a Kern. That's going to be something you have to worry about for Father's Day because you're not going to be as easily, you know, CC immune as you would be at level 20. Yep. Well, Alec Hate Club versus Father's Day in a best of three. Winner goes on, loser goes home. Won't see any more of them here in the Smite 2 Founder Series. One's well-rounded, one is unique. Let's see who wins the day in game number one. LRN on the Zeus out of mid. Going up against, oh, it's an Anubis, actually. Okay, so we got a little bit more well-rounded magical damage score. We, we are we are separating out the uh, <laughs> the concern a little yeah, bit. It makes a lot more sense, honestly. That makes me breathe a little bit easier. Um, still is a Hercules, though, and it'll be a Hercules jungle gore, which have not seen that in many, many moons, but... Big Excavate certainly could do a lot of damage. Yeah, honestly, and this is the thing, and, and I'm wondering if it was maybe... Minions. I'm trying to think of how to describe it. Hercules came out, um, and in the polite terms of wording it, he was overtuned. Mm -hmm. um, then he got nerfed into the ground uh, to... to, to kind of pure non-existence i mean there was no real reason to play him because it just felt like he wasn't as good as pretty much anybody else that you might be putting in the role that he would be going into this has me curious because i do like a lot of what hercules brings to the table what does he have cc he's got the ability to knock up push back lock you down the boulder's good his healing's good he brings so much but what is the scaling going to be like? Are you going mostly damage? Or are you going hybrid in the jungle? Luckily, you're up against an Athena jungle. Like, if that was a Loki or a Fenrir on the other side, I probably wouldn't be as into it. But it also feels pretty solid, actually, all around. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really excited to watch this just because it does feel like something that, while some players have done, you know, in the past, have played a Hercules in the jungle, that's not a common matchup. 
and admittedly in the founder series he just hadn't really been that guy <laughs> so no. so i am uh, excited to see what he's going to bring to the table because he does feel like he should be a pretty prominent pick and, and a pretty solid controlling factor here for for alec a club yeah and look i just i just like the pick i mean the uh, the ability to push pull all of it fun to watch when it's in uh, in the right hands Invade, bit of one for Alec Hate Club here, legit and renowned. <laughs> Trying to steal away a buff, and it looks like able to do so. So Father of Four, sad. Kind of makes me sad. I, I want to see Father of Four do well. Because I always think Your of the meme that's like... Like in, in like you're playing like what, like a shooter or whatever. You come home and you crush them and you like you're talking smack on the mic and then you hear like yeah GG like on the other side like kind of quiet and sad and it's like the dad who just got home from work um, doesn't have much time to play. Not saying that's the case here for Father of Four, but my emotions <laughs> my emotions are in the mix here and so I hope that Father of Four is able to do well or <laughs> are you gonna give up first blood or get first blood? Everything hanging in the balance in the solo lane. There was definitely something I saw earlier where, you know, especially in, in gaming, because much like you said, depending on, oh on the God. life <laughs> balance with kids, uh, there is, you know, the, the concept. Like, you you aim like the, you know, a father who has a, you know, wife and spends time with his wife and his kids and has a well-rounded job. Like, it just means that you're not spending every waking hour on X, Y, or Z. And so, like you said, maybe you need a little little facilitation over here to help you out. Mm -hmm. As tech. Yep, there you go. It's Chase on the rotation in and Father of Four on the assist for first blood. Still a pluck to be had over in dual lane. That'll be a, an interaction I'm sure we'll see plenty of. So back puck into Lanky. Lanky dashes away. Not the ideal target this game, so bit of a counter. However, Chase over from solo lane into duo lane. Wall is up, forces the beads. Mario Bro lives to fight another day. Oh no, underneath the tower! Cosmic Vibes nearly with the pluck for the kill. But Father's Day lives to fight another day. They have just had that gas pedal pressed down in the early portions of this game. Oh, it was the Phantom Shell, not the beads. The Phantom Shell took him through the wall. Yeah, then a very, very big crucial detail and, and thing to have on your side of things i mean this early on you know you again trying to stay alive something that you maybe struggle with a little bit that's actually kind of dangerous being able to move forward your hercules is right there like there's a world if lrn is a little more aggressive or maybe if you have the taunt up as the athena that the, the, you get a chain lightning that bounces between the two of you and creates another kill but instead like you've kind of highlighted just the first blood and nothing too too crazy although zeus all already being there and used and still just now hitting five for the anubis is actually a huge deal in farm double taunt what a start here for chase can you clean up the damage sure can it's lrn out of mid second kill of the game for father's day first for themselves gore the the cleanliness of just these rotations from father's day have not really left anything to be desired though we've seen this where father of four lost their blue buff like it'll happen again as Aztec and Legit combine for the invade. No kills just yet, only a couple of buffs pulled away, but the early goings here are, are a lot of chase on this Athena spearheading their efforts. Yeah, and honestly, that's what it should be. I, I have talked a lot over the last few weeks about my thoughts on, on Athena jungle in general and what she brings to the table, what she's good at, what she's, you know, not good at. And, and like, this is a pick that... You're gonna have a decent amount of damage on. I mean, one zero one, right? Obviously, you're able to get kills. You're you're able to be present. You are dash taunter. That is what Athena does. That's just like the god in a nutshell. Is do your best to set up kills. If you also happen to get killed, because in jungle you can go hybrid. Good for you. Thumbs up. You nailed it. But global ult, dash taunt. Those are the three things that matter the most in an Athena kit. Those are the three things that matter the most. Uh, when I look at Chase here, and those are the three things that, that matter most, admittedly, for Father's Day around Chase. You are the setup machine, and, and you had called it, but like a double taunt right there makes sure that you're going to get the, the guaranteed kill. A lockdown like this in the mid, like, wow, that's what Athena brings. That's what she does. It is just kill machine Your setup. And that is what I want from Chase more than anything, is, is just make everyone around you that much bigger. 
What a start for Father's Day. We have not seen one like this in, in the previous couple of games. And Alec Hate Club. You hate for this to just start to fall apart, but the left side of the map has just been a bloodbath. Chase with four out of four affected kills. Everywhere the Athena goes, kills seem to follow. And now Chase is over on the right side. The question is Aztec gonna slightly overextend. A dash, no dazzling offensive for the time being. Can you get that dash on cooldown? May end up being the question here. Dash in. Just waiting to see what Aztec does. There's the dash. So A-OK, -okay, but Gore, love what we've seen out of the Father's Day jungler and the yeah. early goings of this game. I mean, again, it's it's this question that has been answered multiple times. Like, you could fall behind on Athena, and as long as you've still got your abilities leveled, then guess what? You're still useful to the team, right? You're ahead in this instance, although I guess technically a little behind in farm to legit ahead in team presence and map presence and you have something that that you know the solo laners have access to the dual laners have access to you can teleport across the map i think you can just do that whenever the ult is available and so that's what i really like to see from chase here is just this presence all around it's been heavy in mid as well making sure the zeus is up to zero like that feels really good wouldn't mind seeing lanky get some love try to get lanky even further ahead i think jingwei needs the the gold and items and levels a little more so show face over in the right hand side or sorry i guess in this case the left hand side right hand side for the athena uh, just be present wherever you can find it aztec but stealing away those blue buffs only one death so far has dazzling offensive <laughs> the chase begins though chase is on the case but does not quite have the speed. So, 103 start for Chase, but legit has just been kicking back and farming. It's a one level Was that for the Hercules. a Paw Patrol reference? Uh, that was actually, for me, I mean, it might be. For me, it was a reference to the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, okay. But Chase is in, up and over, they'll go. Renown locked off. The damage is enough, though, to get a kill on a Lanky. But how about it from LRN? The damage, massive. And it's four kills in a row for this Zeus. I'm focused on the jungle. I need to keep my eyes on this Zeus. Level 11. 4-0-0. Zero, zero, right off the rip. LRN is playing this the right way as well. Which is to say, corral him up, let Zeus knock him down. I mean, it, that is all you need to do. Throw out, drop your ult. Drop the chain lightning. Drop your DPS wherever you can. That's part of why he's such a strong pick right now. LRN in on the fury but so is alec hate club keep your eyes up top we'll see who grabs it it's father's day and maybe it's lrn specifically good eye gore on the uh, on the detonate that grabs it for father's day this is uh, methodical in a way that we did not really see in the previous set it's all about can they hold on to this pace and hold on to this lead without those individual mistakes that kind of send some of these games sideways This is a really, really interesting spot to be. What a wall as well. Perfect to cut me off. I wanted to talk about the jungle. I guess I can talk about the Ymir. He's, he's kind of made his presence very heavy. But this is an interesting spot to be in because it does feel like legit, who uh, is unfortunately going to eat the, the, the short end of the stick here, not just on the right side of the map getting put down, but, but I feel like... Everywhere I, I'm seeing Chase presence, I, I'm kind of been scratching my head and wondering, like, when are we going to see, like, Hercules? I, I've seen him die the one time. I, I haven't really seen a lot of aggressive plays, and the farm is going well. In fact, for a little bit there, Legit was ahead in terms of experience overall from what this Athena was able to bring to the table. But is your farm going to get the job done if the Athena is helping every single lane get ahead? If your Zeus is three levels up, does it matter if you're you know half a level ahead and so i'm kind of curious and and, and and waiting anxiously to see what this hercules is going to get to bring to the table if anything because while i do like it as a pick it does feel like at least right now it's kind of not keeping up pace with what it needs to be matching renown goodbye says dave and thank you says lrm i mean goodness gracious five and oh level 13 at 10 minutes I mean, look, 
Father's Day, they are they are cruising right now. I gotta I'd be surprised if we see this Zeus back in game number two. I mean I didn't see it's one of those things where you see it get banned so much, so much, eventually it gets let through and you're like, alright, now it's time to finally see if this is worthwhile. We we're having the same conversation with uh, with the Baron. At least according to this one bit of data. Banning out this Zeus appears to have been the right call. And it's it's a pick core that you can jump on. I mean you can you can you can make uncomfortable. But it's hard to jump on you're just gonna drop the lightning storm at your feet. I mean now you're at the point where you're not even sure you wanna jump on this Zeus. Real uh difficult decision making for Alec Hate Club here in the next few minutes. How can you possibly play around this Zeus? Oh well, the answer would typically come and and this is where I, I go back to, to maybe talking about the jungle because it does feel a lot like uh that's where you need to find the pressure i mean zeus what is the one thing that that that, that is ever presently true about him he's kind of immobile i mean yes he can move a little faster right now that's that's something that goes for him but you've got slows you've got knockups you've got cc that's what you need to be using against him. you just need to throw it all at the wall see what sticks but there's also a pretty good chance for a lot of you. I mean, in any of those instances, let's say a Hercules or a Sobek step Don't up with an Anubis tower. behind them Sucker to try and get the damage done. He's four levels up on the minimum of you, let alone five or six, depending on who else is actually there. You're just going to get Chain Lightning eliminated. Like right now, I think the, the, the way you deal with the Zeus is you just try to not let him get any further ahead by not giving him anything. Don't let him work off of your plays. Don't go for ganks. Try to find pressure elsewhere. Mario, bro. I mean, with the onslaught that's been happening across the map, you consider Mario, bro, a bit lucky here. As has largely been left alone, just the one death so far in this game. But need a little bit more. I mean, you, you hate to be talking at 12 minutes about how, all right, they got to sit back, they got to farm up, maybe eventually they'll get there, blah blah blah. But that's sort of the dimension you're in right now. If you're uh, if you're allocate club, we know. What an Anubis can do. Father of four. Can you be the second death of the game for Allocate Club? No is the answer. Though it gives you a glimmer of hope if you're uh, if you're Aztec or Allocate Club that you've got a solo laner who can deal some damage to the other team's solo laner. Fortunately, you're going to need uh, need just a little bit more. Legit, Gore is has largely been absent so far in this game and for a while I was saying okay at least the uh, at least the Hercules is farming one level ahead the farm has been great time to apply some of that farm to the map need to see something from this Hercules here in the next few minutes not even just turning the entire game around but show me that there's some, some proactivity here for this team maybe send it to the left send it to the right anywhere that this mid is not you might have an opportunity could be over here. <laughs> By the Fury? Or is it just going to be quiet, unconcerning, and unbothered? Sure is. Fury. And a pull back on to the Amir. Finally on the double bounce. I called it. I got it. Not quite in the way I thought. But it's kill nonetheless. And you know what? Kill nonetheless, like you said, is a step in the right direction. Support for Gold Fury is a trade that Father's Day should take pretty much any time they can because that is just worth it every step of the way in fact for a little bit there i was even thinking like i've never seen a more unbothered Yamir. it wasn't until the boulder came out that it that we really got to see oh vert is actually in trouble here it felt as if vert was, was not only uncaring but maybe even a little untouchable and luckily you get that kill but like you said this is such an awkward spot because the way the, the next few minutes of this game go and you hear Father's Day, you should just keep pressing your advantage everywhere you can. I mean, you know, you're going to find a 1v1. You have better control over in duo, and as long as legit isn't locking you down, you're fine. In fact, if you're lanky, you're not even that worried about the Hercules because the number one tool he has for lockdown at range, you can just dash away off of. Like, you don't even have to be that stressed about it. Meanwhile, the wall and the Zeus on the other side, what is the, the driving factor for Father's Day? Everyone has to be stressed. Sure do. Father's Day. Now grab themselves a Pyromancer. It's a pretty clean, simple game that's going on here. Uh, for Father's Day. Is, there's no surprise based on how we've talked about things here. Vertil, interestingly enough, a couple levels down 
to Cosmic Vibes. I wonder if this Ymir is just letting their lane just get the farm. Or as Cosmic Vibes has kind of had to hang around a little bit longer. As you're seeing decent leads built up across this map. Uh, for everybody else, as Tech nearly got a kill a moment ago, sadly, there's an Athena who will join the fight against you at any given moment. And happens this time over in solo lane. 7k behind. Mario Bro has beads. Your right tower is under attack. Does not have the safety of that phantom shell as they did earlier in the game. So, uh, just a bit of positioning. Could have been the issue there, but now it's about grouping up, finding some of that pressure. That is just so annoying. Just sitting behind the lane, getting chunked out. I'm not even trying to fight you right now, my man. I am just trying to sit back. Is there enough damage on the Mario, bro? Oh, the double polymorph is enough. Airstrike just misses. And back goes Lanky. Dodges out the dash in, stands and delivers. And how about it under the tier one from Lanky. LRN on the rotation in. Cleans up the second kill. Chase left running. Does not have ultimate. Should be able to rejoin the rest of their team. Anywhere the Zeus goes, death soon follows. Dodge out from Chase. How about the damage from mid, though? The Anubis, Renown, starting to deal just a bit. Detonate damage rolls through as well. LRN still full HP. You're just going to turn and fight here at any given moment. But Renown has the kill on a Vertil. Far from clean for Father's Day, and it's a moment that Alec Hate Club have been looking for. One where they can fight at all. And worth mentioning, although it might depend. Good little taunt actually forces the beast. That was, was unexpected, uh, I think, overall. Maybe it's because, and, and maybe rightly so, LRN was lurking nearby. What I was going to say is the issue and struggle that you're going to face here is for Alec Hate Club. That's a good set of kills, and it also is a good representation for Father's Day that you can't just roll everything in your favor. Like, your, your lead right now is Chase and... LRN. Like, th those are the guys that are the driving force for your team. I will admit, Vertail is in a, a great spot. Vert, this Ymir, the walls, the damage, the lockdown is just absolutely insane. And so being two levels down isn't the end of the world. Not great, but not the end of the world. It does feel like Lanky is in an unfortunate spot, though, because it's like you're one, two, and five. You're not going to be the the driving benefactor. I think you need to be playing through your Zeus, and, and, and rightly so for this team. Seven and zero. There's no reason not to be. Fury again. Ooh, I thought maybe legit had it on the excavate, but no, it's Father's Day with three Furies in a row. No surprise there. Maybe a fire giant around the corner. I'm keeping my eyes on level 20 watch. It's level 20 watch officially for LRN. We're at 18 minutes at level 19 for the Zeus. Just to soak up some of that farm. Fortunately, you're splitting it three ways over in mid. Obviously, LRN unconcerned with getting to level 20 as fast as possible, but us here at home want to see it happen. Could have happened before 19 minutes, but now back to base. I think it'll probably be the level 20 in 20 minutes. But the risk of getting picked now means Fire Giant, where maybe it didn't just a few minutes ago. Allocate Club. Gotta find a pluck onto LRN, but LRN has beads. Uh, if they're off of cooldown. Honestly, you might jump in. LRN and LRN might just kill your team for it. Like there's there's a yeah, chance point. that put LRN the, wants it. Yeah, put 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 the lightning storm at your feet, right? I mean that's oh, I I'm contradicting what I said earlier. Of course. You just drop it at your feet and see what happens. Goodbye, renown. That one's simple and easy. Talk about a pick being costly. This Fire Giant was going to go anyway, but now it's much more simple for Father's Day. Fire Giant number one, no contest from Alec Hate Club. And it'll be easy FG in game number one. Yeah, this is... Honestly, and I appreciate what we're seeing on the left side of the map right now from Alec Hate Club. Pretty much the only thing you can do when you're, you're, you're getting smacked everywhere else you step up. What do you do? You push the towers elsewhere. You fight nowhere near Father's Day, and you try to find what gold and what advantage you can away from them. You can't beat the Zeus right now. So what do you do instead? You get as far away as possible. You go, you push down, 
you only get the tier one you're not going to be able to compete with the push of a, a fire giant so you do have to have that struggle uh, and admittedly they're about to get even more powerful because i've seen 3k gold in hand for that bologna that's about to get spent like it is still devastating for you you're still at a level deficit in pretty much every single role and you will be for a little while but zeus hit 20 so he's not going anywhere at least not any higher than where he's at the gold is going to be the true separator for you I think you can still set up defenses. Again, the, the issue, and it kind of comes to like a draft-wide issue, you've got a lot of great setup if you're Allocate Club, but you, you just haven't really been in a spot to use any of it. Like, it, it just feels like a lot of it, it, it you know, Jingwei deals with both the, the pluck from Herc and from Sobek really easily. Ama's not been on that side of the map and hasn't been in a position. It was a really well-played early game by Father's Day, to the point where I'll say, like, I mean, since, like, five, six, seven minutes into this game, like, there hasn't really been a point where I, like, Hate Club have been in a spot to dominate. In fact, if anything, it's it's moments like that where you almost get picked out. Like, you can't afford that. Your team needs to be grouped up if you're going to try to mount a defense anyway. Yep. Father's Day. They are grouped up. Going to send one. That's father of four. Separate from his four teammates. Keep your eyes on LRN, 701 on the Zeus. Far and away ahead of really everyone else in this game. Father of Four has quietly put together really nice damage numbers this game. Renown, not sure you want to step forward there. It's going to be a 3v2 for Alec Hate Club over on right. Excavate deals some damage to Chase, but man, so many ultimates and, and empty handed are Alec Hate Club. Now Father's Day can step back, take a Deep breath, regroup. Your left Phoenix is Head on back to that Ancient Fury. Give yourself even more advantage when it comes to base siege, as if you needed it. This deck might need to think twice about this. Yeah, you don't really have much of a chance. Clean and smart, Gormizer from uh, from from Father's Day here. Not, not pushing the envelope too far, but they're probably in a position where they can. Yeah, this is something that. I mean, realistically, if you are Allocate Club, I don't know if I necessarily like where I see legit, but at the same time, I don't know if your team sets up a defense here that you're going to feel good about, if, even if you're available and, and around. So you're making the plays that you can make. You're, you're trying to set up a defense. This should be a pretty easy Phoenix overall for Father's Day, though. Should be an easy tier two tower in mid. Honestly, at this point, you're just kind of hoping the fire giant runs out sometime soon so you can get a little bit of a, a breath of fresh air away from some of the pressure. LRN, oh, Boulder. it's a shutdown and it's a big one. This is your chance if you're Alec Hate Club. You have finally dealt with the Zeus, but Lanky is still in the fight. This Jingwei might just clean things up here. No one has turned their eyes towards the ADC. Not enough damage yet. Father of four in the meantime sends Mario Bro back. Lanky with the last auto, how about it from the Jingwei, a triple kill. And there's only two left alive for Father's Day, one left alive for Alec Hate Club. Is it a Phoenix call? Appears to be, there's a bodyguard for the Jingwei here. And I think that'll be it on this fight. Phoenix still on the whole lane side of the map. Mario Bros gotta be careful. Don't wanna give away this game. Honestly, that is maybe the shining moment in, in such a, a I'm passing the torch style of LRN, like who already like does still does a lot of damage, don't get me wrong, is still a huge factor of this game. But this I'm going to die, but it doesn't matter because my Jingwei's hit late game and like I can die peacefully, fall back into the sky. They finally done the one thing they needed to do. This is the moment for Alley Gate Club and then creating this mental crumble where, where, where everything falls underneath them because Lanky just gets to do late game Jingwei things and is going to do it even more. In fact, to the point, I, I'm, I'm so excited because I never get to talk about this item because it never gets bought. We've seen uh, the, the Braggies harp every now and then, but the death metal finally locked in a little more crit. You're going to do some damage. You've got to tax me. I am so happy to see this. Heck just yeah. because of the name of the item, the, the icon, it's just beautiful. I'm so happy. Uh, and it does work so well on a Jingwei, right? Where crit isn't massive, this is going to open up some crit and, and create even more damage. Chase opens things up here. This time, LRN just needs to stay alive, and this fight is simple. 
Lanky, though, has really come alive in the last few minutes of this game. It was written on the wall from minute one. And now we're at minute done. It's going to be game one over to Father's Day. It's clean. It's simple. <laughs> the, the brawl in the jungle means nothing but a Dia side in game one win for Father's Day. Yeah, so my predictions for game two. Tell me. Zeus is going to get banned. <laughs> uh -huh. The thing is, and this is what's going to be interesting, Alec Hate Club, the, as first pick, had the opportunity to go for that power, powerhouse. And so it was a gamble that, that, that Father's Day took. They were willing to let the Zeus exist. And it paid off because they are the ones who ended up getting him. He just looks incredibly, incredibly strong throughout all of that. So maybe Allocate Club let it through again, but this time lock it in. Maybe they they were worried too much about the Sobek presence no. or, or overvaluing what Sobek would do for them. But I have to imagine, look, if I, if I have the choice right now between Baron, who's been losing every game left and right that I've watched, and, and Zeus, who mm -hmm. just did that, I'm banning the Zeus every time. Yeah, uh, every single day of the week. No no questions asked. Father's Day, what a start to this set. Really simple adjustments, I think, for Allocate Club yeah. going into picks and bans uh, for game number two. Not too shabby for Father's Day. Start off our best of three with a win in game one. One step closer to qualifying the playoffs and sending Allocate Club packing. See how things shake out. Game two, coming up next.
heck of a start here for Father's Day in game number one. Gore, it's the, the Zeus that kind of takes things over, and we'll, we'll break yeah. it down here in just a little bit. But, you know, wa- watching games like that and just having fun with it, you know, it's a pretty light. There's a lot of, uh, of, of fun and laughter to be had and sort of a steamer, unless you're allocate club, you're not having too much fun. Uh, but what's really important, especially with Smite, it gets me really itchy for, uh, for more great Smite content. Um, because that one seemed like a montage, right? It was sort of like yeah. Zeus just running things down, put some music behind it, things are looking good. And so if that makes you needy for some more uh, for some more Smite content, boy, do I have some good news for you. On YouTube, we are stacked full of Smite content uh, from start to finish. Earlier, I told you about Smite VOD. Guess what? Now you got Smite Pro. Gore's Goofy Games will be on there. Uh, Smite Too Long didn't watch, so if you want recaps of the previous weeks, uh, Smite 2 games, those sorts of things, great opportunity and great content listed there. This game will be on Smite VOD, but Smite Pro has more of your lighthearted, uh, structured content, interviews, uh, content pieces, those sorts of things. So check it on out, youtube.com slash Smite Pro. And Gore, I'm sad. I never got to participate in Gore's Goofy Games. You know, maybe that's a special, right? That's that's just waiting to happen at some yeah. point. Is you come in on a Friday and we just play like some Hangman. Yeah, <laughs> and now we're we talking. just do like a gauntlet of, of games, some trivia, and all, all the fun stuff. Yeah, maybe we'll see. I'd probably lose. I'm 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 so far out of touch at this point. But let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about game number one here, Gore. It's Father's Day, and it's L R N out of mid mm-hmm. that steals the show. I mean, really. So much running through chase on that Athena jungle early in the game, but then sort of before you know it, you look down and Zeus is is four and zero, oh, and you're like, "What in the world happened here?" Um, and LRN just picks up so many of those great additional kills. And the Zeus one time dies, but it was way too difficult to kill throughout the game in game number one. And then Lanky starts to pick up the pace and chase, and it was really just a great team win. But early on, brought there by Chase, and and then the Zeus score, I think an obvious maybe target for allocate club moving into a uh, game two. Yeah. It, it, it's one of those things that is very convenient when, when the other team says, Hey, by the way, if you needed to know, this is what you should ban. And they like, you, you know, we said, make it pretty simple overall. And as we see, especially as we move forward, I expect that that Zeus is going to be unavailable so we have to have a different conversation it also means that it changes the 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 draft i think around it right father of four did great but like father of four had a pretty easy moment like linky did great had a pretty easy like draft to step into because everything was going so well so i'm looking at at, okay what do you do like do you still go for an athena if you don't have like the crazy follow-up that zeus brings Mm -hmm. where where do you look for what do you try to do all of that's even assuming that Zeus gets banned. Maybe, maybe Zeus doesn't. So I, I think there's some, some questions that can only be answered as we move forward. But I, I think for Allocate Club, this is a team that has in the past shown the, the capability to change things when necessary and to adjust when necessary. And now they've got to do exactly that. And again, Zeus seems like an obvious choice. We'll see. Allocate Club Father's Day going into P's and B's for game number two. And maybe some of it is just the conditions of, of game one. Maybe Chase just had the great ganks. LRN benefited. Maybe your argument is that you run that game back 10 times and the Zeus isn't doing that. But maybe a couple. That would be the uh, the unlucky argument from Allocate Club. Athena was more of the, the issue. And, and Gore, I think I agree in the first like five six minutes of that game chase was just on it the athena the double taunts um all of it so strong at at setting up kills across the map and then eventually they funneled into lrn and probably smart here from allocate club forcing father's day into that zeus band take away the athena because that can kind of go with any comp and then father's day are like we don't want you to get the zeus so we got to take away the zeus and effectively pulling away both of what worked really well in game one for uh, for Father's Day. Yeah, this is a a <laughs> this is a change up. I actually admire Sandy. this because I do think that Father's Day, after showing the the greatness that was the Zeus, like you 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 kind of have to to ban it yourselves because yeah. you can't let let them have it. 
it does mean that we get the, I, I'm I'm still gonna be honest about it don't like Baron don't like what I've seen from Baron don't know if, I, if there's been a moment that I've seen a Baron get locked in and I've thought he's the linchpin it's finally don't happening like so I think there's a little bit of pressure love the fin rear though I honestly do like the 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 pickups there as far as team fights and capabilities no go up front I like Alec Club a little more with the Odin Sobek the Jingwei still needs a little time in the oven to cook, right? That's something that's, you know, the biggest quote unquote downside that she brings is that her late game is insane, but her early game is how you pay for it. Yep. And so there's definitely a, an avenue to bully and that Fenrir should be able to bully a Jingwei pretty early on, especially with a, a Ymir in that duo. Like what I see out of the Ymir. Like what the I see out of Father's Day still, except lands. again, it's, it's barren that gets picked so much. Is it... Is it good enough to carry a game for Father's Day here? Because you are funneling a lot behind it. Look at the setup that Father's Day have in their uh, in their first four picks. Ragnarok, Life of the Party, Eagles Rally, Freeze, Slows, Walls from Ymir. Now you just need an ADC to follow up on that damage. Alec Hate Club have some of it as well, Gore. It's a bit more linear. You got a Sobek Pluck, great. Odin Spear, great. You got a big ring of spears, though. That's worth mentioning. Uh, and then Loki's got an assassin. So, so you're sort of locking Strikes. down a lot of individual pieces, it feels like, for Alec Hate Club here. Father's Day, it seems, Gore want to corral you a bit. Uh, and Kubo Khan, certainly good at following up on that. Yeah, I, I do think, man, it's such an interesting draft. I think team-wise, I prefer Alec Hate Club's overall comp for what it is capable of doing as a five stack. I think like Loki early on, ganks should be able to find kills. New Wob we saw in set one can do a lot of good damage. Sobek, Odin, setup is there. Jingwei late game, boom, you got it. Father's Day have the spice. Father's Day get to come in like, you know, Kukul Khan we talked about earlier and guess what Kukul Khan does better than a lot of others right now? Well, that's secure. You guess what the Bologna can do, the Ymir can do. They can start the fights at a drop of a hat and you get this Baron. The thing you are going to be lacking, the thing that is going to hurt you the most overall is even if this Bologna goes exclusively into auto attack damage and is only focused on, on her, her ability to auto attack, you are going to be missing that ranged physical DPS that is good for sieging towers and good in a late game team fight, especially if they, they go for some of the crit, right? So if you're looking at this Jingwei, maybe a little unopposed, I'm looking at this, I've seen it a few times in the past, and I, I wanna say maybe it was Lanky and this squad that ran it, Father's Day I think did it last week, I can't remember entirely. Playing the Bologna ADC, it was something I remember like, it worked, but it wasn't like it was like the, the the greatest thing in the world. It was just kind of like, hey, everybody else is doing well, so you don't you're not getting punished. Uh, if that ends up being the case, I don't necessarily hate it. I think Bologna, especially when you throw her in and focus more on her attack damage for a carry role, you do get this position where her her disarm becomes a really big deal in one v ones. Your ability to clear like your hammer, your burst. Um, you have an engage slash disengage on your, your ultimate. And admittedly, it's a little more lenient on the ultimate, but like you've definitely got some versatility to work with. With the Ymir to throw up walls and freeze people, like you can close the gap and, and, and make up for the lack of range in those instances. Yep. Maybe you're throwing a mage over there into that role. It's not necessarily unheard of. We've seen it a few times. Like the Morrigan has done it. You know, maybe Kukulkan, maybe Baron, but like. It really is an interesting draft from Father's Day. Definitely changes up the mix from, from game one. Time to find out, Gormaz. Your Father's Day, a chance to qualify. Alec Hate Club trying to just keep playing some Smite 2 in our Founder Series. You lose, you're going home. We won't see any more of you. You win, we'll see you next weekend in the playoffs. Though, Alec Hate Club could send us to a game three. That's the, uh, the forbidden third option that we could see. The LRN's going to have to change up that play style a little bit. Yes, you got the big damage, execute ultimate. Positioning could be pretty similar. But Alec Hate Club, Gore, they, they just really got to get off to a better start. And, and I think you got a good opportunity to do so here with, with the Loki instead of the Hercules. The Hercules, I admire the creativity. Was not quite the answer, though, as far as pace setting in the jungle. So I, I, I need to see it here from legit because Chase, again, has a good pace setting pick on the opposite side with that Fenrir. Yeah, I think the 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 capabilities late game 
Alec Hate Club have have a lot of this game in space. It's getting the late game that is going to be the hardest thing. Right? I, I mean, Loki plus Jingwei late is going to be absolutely bonkers. But Chase is really good about seven minutes into this game. Honestly, even earlier, but seven minutes, you see the Finra really hit the stride. And you've got enough backup. I mean, you know, we saw a Baron earlier, and I will admit I gave it a lot of trouble, and that's because I still don't really like him that much. <laughs> like, as a god right now, I feel like it's it's entirely overvalued. But it's still going to do damage, right? Early on, it's actually perfect for dealing damage. Depending on the build, you might be able to do a lot against it so you can shut him down. Ymir is going to have a lot of control. You've got a tanky aspect in, in this Bologna that can deal a lot of damage at the same time early on to really punish the Jingwei. So you have some pressure in, in, in the left lane. And then Kukul Khan can not only play aggressive, but realistically, you could just sit at your tower line if things are going wild and, and terrible and do that. Throw up a tornado and just fall backwards. You don't have to worry too much about it. So I'm curious. I think a lot of weight does fall onto Chase's shoulders, though, to, to make this performance work. It's just that he has a, a good crew around him to try and facilitate some of that mid game. Ooh, father of four. Wow. Did not see much of this in game one. Aztec with just complete lane control. Gonna hope to survive a little bit longer. Uh, in order to keep this lane a bit more in the balance. Can set that wonder about this Baron jungle fight. Blink. Maybe Blink Suh exchanged. The jungler swap sides. Chase and Legit both left running. So back we go. It's a simple step back in farming. And if nothing else, score, we saw Legit in a fight early in the game. I'm going to call that a win. Yeah, honestly, it is something that <laughs> you get not a whole lot of. Loki is, is someone who I think can do a lot of damage in this, this early position as well. And is really, again, really, really good god to, to lock in. But, and that it's the asterisk that always comes with it. This is where you can still be punished. Because you don't have your ult for the escape. Uh, and your invids can only go so far. In fact, Brutalize can follow you through that. And so it still favors the Finner for a little bit. When you have your ults online, you still have to be a little careful. Because unless it's up, the, fa the trade, I think, favors the Finner. Until a couple items are online. Then the DPS shift starts to favor the loki the later the game goes loki is going to win 1v1s and that's when it starts to favor fenrir in the i'm going to brutalize to keep track of you through invis and then use my ragnarok to drag you back to someone who's just going to shred your health bar instantly it definitely still leans towards chase and like you said we got an early fight that's really the the, the big takeaway here but it it makes me I guess keep an eye on legit more than than I did last game because last game legit didn't didn't do anything <laughs> like just straight up didn't do anything. So this is the moment for this Loki to shine. Need to see more of it from legit. Chase get a little leeway after game one. This is nice little invade, little grouping, little steal. Why not? Father of four has not had an easy time in this laning phase. Shoved back by Noden, which is maybe no surprise the type of damage Odin could do. This could be awkward. Renown is going to run face first into Chase and LRN here. I don't think they were quite prepared for it. BTU, Spirit of the Nine wins. How about it? Renown dodges right back into it. And there's your first blood. Father of Four is low, and it looks like that heal maybe didn't quite connect. Aztec jumped up and over. Are you going to get him in a tower range? Oh, get him on the stun! What a play, Father of Four! But there's no heal remaining. Needed it, because Renown sent that ultimate on over towards right, and there's your answer back. But what a play from the Baron, and what a play from Chase and LRN. A two-kill start, and one answered back by Alec Hate Club. Yeah, I think, first off, you get the, the death uh, to the hands of a new Wahoo's ulting. And admittedly, it's good for Renown. It's good for Alec Hate Club. You get the kill. Thumbs up. Patch yourselves on the back. Realistically, though, Father of Four has the flashier play, and that's the one that matters more to me. And it gets weighted a little heavier because it's a little flashier, right? Turning something around like that, being able to get that kill, stay, I guess, not alive, but, you know, ahead in your lane. Although that's not even true because you're technically a level down. But you're in a spot where where you make a play on a Baron that, that kind of goes to show what this god can do, why people lean so heavily onto him. 
It's just making sure that that stays consistent and that you actually has, have a presence, you know, beyond that turnaround. I'm going to keep an eye on, on, on Father of Four because last game, we got to see a really big performance from that Bologna. Rotations from this Baron could be, I mean, essential, pivotal. Burning beads, you know, we're talking forcing ults, CC, that lockdown, that vortex. It's very unique, very solid. Cosmic vibes. Alongside a couple other members of Allocate Club. Way in mid lane, blink forward with the Ragnarok. Not much mana left. Can you just clean up this kill on the legit LRN has just been on it. The Spirit of the Nine Winds hits perfectly. Gotta be careful fighting in the jungle. If you're Allocate Club, if you're feeling just fine with what you've got on Chase now, is he slow? Can he get out of range? Is that enough for the execute? No. And Cosmic Vibes cannot burn through the shell and Chase falls to the DOT on the other side. LRN just does not have that damage. But now life for the party is just out of range and that's how we'll end here in mid. Honestly, you get to see, again, a little bit of trading. Chase going down is kind of devastating, realistically. Like, it, it can cause a lot of trouble. Jingwei's never in trouble. I always forget about the, the, the frequent and copious quantities of escape that Jingwei has. Yeah. And I was a little worried there. Uh, but Lanky, I think, shows a lot. But Chase going down, again, that's, that's a big shutdown early on to slow the Fenrir down. Just a little... Fury pulled. Do not have Spirit of the Nine Winds or confirm. Down goes Renown from the ultimate. Gotta be a kill here for Lanky on the Bologna ADC. No, the shell is enough. And goodness gracious, in the back line, it's legit going crazy. He's killed two. And he was left alone with Father's Day. Lanky's got the shell as well. Cosmic Vibes burnt by Father of Four. How about the answer? The Loki makes their mark early but swept by the wayside and the good team fighting from Father's Day. Yeah, I mean, again, played well. They execute the the main goal they have in mind overall up front. And while it maybe doesn't result in what was kind of the original intended target, right? Going for that Fury was, was what they wanted to happen. Getting a couple kills, extending a small lead, and potentially finding themselves the, again, next little minutes of leverage that's going to be what matters. That being said, grand scheme, the game's kind of dead even. I mean, Odin's got a small lead, but it's balanced by Lanky, who has a small lead. Like, it does feel like you need a, a little more to open the, the, the next can of worms for Father's Day if you want to lock down, or if you are able to lock down the Jingwei. That's the first step, maybe in the right direction. At least on left, right? It can be mid, it could be this Sobek, but you need a kill. And you need the kill to be not returned at all. If you get two kills, you need to not drop one in response just to open up the Fury. Otherwise, we're going to have to wait enough time at this rate that we might be talking about Pyromancers before we see that. Aztec. A little jump away. Cosmic vibes walled off. Lots of fighting happening here early in game number two. No mystery what Alec Hate Club are fighting for here. Obviously not Alec. Staying alive in this tournament. Chase found their way back behind. He's in knockback cosmic vibes lurking in the water. But Vertil has enough damage. So the support for Alec Hate Club now gone. Ragnarok onto Renown. Here's a great fight. For Father's Day, Spirit of the Nine wins a rare miss for LRN. And all this time, Father of Four walking down a tower over in Solo. Should be first Fury of the game here for Father's Day. Mario Bro has a chance to get in, steal it away. And no, it'll be Fury number one for Father's Day. Vertillo has got that separator. It's a bit slow. Mario Bro has enough damage to skirmish out, but it's Father's Day with a couple kills and a Fury to boot and 3k gold at the drop of a hat. The the time it took to complete that does stand out to me overall. I mean, you know, I was going to say, I guess RDC, like a range damage carry. I don't know if that's a term, but we can coin it. It does find the damage overall lacking. I mean, look, like Father of Four had a, a full wave, maybe wave and a half uncontested under that tower it's barely touched right because you know baron's just not known for that but also the time it took to, to burn the gold fury was just a little longer than maybe you would want overall and that's just lanky and the build that lanky has gone so far yes you're ahead 
near Bologna, you do a lot of damage in God fights, but it's going to be a little bit before I, I feel as certain around those those Furies. That's brought to you by exactly what I asked for prior, right? They get three kills. They take care of legit renown and cosmic vibes. You you knock down who you need to knock down, and then you don't really have to worry about the rest. You're in a good position. Uh, you get to walk forward. Yeah, it takes a little while. In fact, they respawn while it's all going on, but they're not going to get there in time. If they took any longer, maybe we're having a different conversation, a little stressful conversation. But as it stands, they instead get to, to keep things going. And now look, Chase on the case again to keep moving forward. Up goes Renown, but a world of pain awaits on the ground. Father of Four has the execute. Not much more damage for Chase. Not have Ragnarok either. Now starting to get to razor thin, if any, margins for Alec Hate Club. Maybe one or two bad decisions, bad fights away from falling out of the Smite 2 Founder Series. I put Father's Day into the playoffs to see them play next weekend if they're able to close out the game here in Game 2. Legit, a better showing than what we saw in Game 1. Certainly wasn't bad in the early game, just wasn't really there. This time, getting a few kills, but also have died just three times. As Chase has had back-to-back -back really solid games. LRN doesn't have the kills to show for it, Gorb. Those Spirit of the Nine Winds, Spirits of the Nine Winds, have really been connecting. Chase a rare miss up and over. Kill for LRN, or an assist, rather. I mean, he is just letting those ultimates fly. That one not necessary, but who cares when your team is finding these picks? Alec Hate Club falling 5K behind at 11 minutes. Experience does not look much better. Yeah, it is very different, vastly different from the control the Zeus was able to exude in game one. The result feels very similar in its things where you're able to, to find that pick. Honestly, good damage from Father of All right now. That cage nice. did way more than Aztec could have known, and that tower does just enough that Father of All might not be able to do anything there. But, I mean, that's a, a technical knockout. That's a... You know, oh, send back to base time you're going to find. That's Whoa, legit. pressure on Oof. legit. That's easily found. Renown. Desperately trying to escape. Keep this as a one for none. But again, on the other side of this ultimate, you're under some pressure. Chase on the one Brutalize. Didn't have enough damage, but the leap in was clean enough. Father of four rotates in, trying to help out his jungler. Aztec has already used the jump, already used the shield. Chase. With the shell, somehow stays alive, jumps, stuns, lives, and goodbye, Alec Hate Club, a triple for Chase with no health left. That is unreal. Mario Bro, gotta find it, but how about the up down for the stun? Life of the party is in. Airstrike, clinging to life, Chase on a warpath. But it's a shutdown for the Jingwei. Yeah, someone finally stops it, but but realistically, like, look at Mario Bro's health. The reason Mario Bro is able to get a kill and that Chase dies there is because Chase chose that fight. Chase chose to continue. When Mario Bro let in, when Mario Bro jumped in, they didn't want that. That that it was a a a bad position to be in and a controlling position for Father's Day. And again, the reason Fenrir dies is because of that last leap, that chase down, getting a little greedy in terms of the fight. You already got the triple kill, could have backed off instead. Again, continues that chase down. Father of four has assuaged my worries about this Baron. I, I've been what stressed words. about it. Uh, well, assuaged. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is something that as a, a god, I would, I've not been sold on. I've not seen him perform well on. In, 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 in any of the Founder Series games. It's not like a Father of Four directed target. It's just like straight up, I haven't seen Baron do Baron things. Yep. But when you've got a team that's finding this kind of lead, you get the Baron's Brew kill just for a little, like just an empty bottle that just got y tossed at you. And Mario Bros knocked down. I mean, this is a very controlling lead and maybe that's why the Baron looks really good, but the ults have been in the right spot. The roots have been in a good spot. The healing is there. It's, it's what you need and what you want from this god. Lanky and the squad will pull themselves a Gold Fury, inching ever closer to playoffs qualification and ever closer to sending Alec Hate Club home. Pyromancer, not sure who got it. And frankly, Gore, I'm not sure it matters at this point. Looks like Aztec with that runic bomb and LRN on it again from downtown. 
LRN has just been getting it done. But Chase, the forefront of the damage. Water of four. Sent to the side. Little damage out from Alec Hate Club. Fire Giant, why not? You lose the Pyromancer, but you are so far ahead. But you gotta get this one cleanly. I'm not sure Alec Hate Club are gonna step forward for this. Uwa does have ultimate. Odin's gonna come in. New off season. Have to get this cleanly. This is an opening for Alec Hate Club. If Father's Day doesn't get it well, Aztec is in. Fire Giant goes, and we'll catch back up with that in a moment. I'm thinking it got stolen. It sure did. Aztec jumps in. And with a rally cry, steals the FG away, but gives up his life for it. But what can Father's Day now get done? You lost the FG, but you got an extra member on the map. Maybe, maybe knock down some of these towers, because you've only gotten one. It's the one in mid. Vertil frozen. It's a forgettable last couple of moments for Father's Day in Signs of Life, Gore, from Allocate Club. Yeah, realistically, and, and there's a lot to Whoa. talk about right now. It's Baron who's getting knocked down two kills already. You had mentioned it, but the Fire Giant still on the other side. It is a good spot for Alec Hate Club. And it has me scratching my head. I mean, you had mentioned it like LRN. We saw you use your ult. We know it was used. It was a sick kill. It was awesome. It looked great. When you your team doesn't have the secure, there's no Sunders. There's no other bursts. When the Odin jumps in, why not stop your DPS and focus on the fights? It does feel like it's something that we've seen teams maybe 50-50 unnecessarily. Luckily, you get a kill right now onto Legit. It looks like a second one onto Renown. You're making up for a lot of what went wrong. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it maybe didn't need to go wrong in the first place uh, to create this opening. I mean, Alec Hate Club are in the best position they've been in in the last, like, 13 minutes, it feels like. And it's all because Father's Day... Maybe stick a little too strong with the Fire Giant. Maybe focus too much on the FG instead of the surrounding area. Ward coverage, maybe they could have had a little more. Maybe they could have been more focused on it. Either way, the cards fell the way they did. They've answered back with Aztec being dead when it happened. Legit, Renown now dying. You've at least taken a couple Fire Giants off the board. You slowed down and, and, and recreated the opportunities around this. You're not too worried about it. You're a relatively squishy team, but you can still play aggressive. You still have a gold lead. And you're still the ones kind of driving the game right now. I mean, they're the ones knocking on a tower as opposed to the team that got Fire Giant. And if Alec Hate Club did anything, that steal really does just slow down Father's Day and, and give them an opportunity to try and farm and, and, and equalize more than it does to give them a lead. Father's Day, again, th this is where now you have to stop the bleeding. You've given up an FG. You can't keep giving these kills over. Father of Four lives. Legit. On ice skates. Around Chase he goes. Father of Four left in with Aztec, so legit lives. No rotation in, though Father of Four is in. Trying to chase him down, Mario Bro. Another. Things coming apart at the seams a little bit now for Father's Day. The rest of the team rotates through. Can Lanky chase down a kill? to Polona versus a Ching Wei, and the Polona's winning for now. Forces the air strike away, Aztec. Shell for shielding, pluck back onto one. Renown and LRN going toe to toe in the mid lane. Spear of the Nine wind flies, it looks like it misses. Renown up in the air. And the 1v1 continues, the tornado, the dot connects. Renown left running, three levels down and the Zephyr cleans it up. Finally, something for Father's Day in the last few minutes. I mean, Good luck. <laughs> yeah, it is back and forth. It's a, a weird balance of tug of war, but when you're like ahead, so it's like, well, now with the LRN dying, that actually might help balance things out. In fact, if, if Father of Four goes down, we might be talking about a small Alec Hate uh -oh. Club little, little set of victories here. Wow, the fire giant throw continues. Not a full on throw. Whoa, this could be big. Nope. Mario Bro lives. I think the Aegis was necessary. We I mean, gotta get this. Man. Gotta get the Gold Fury. I think they should be able to. Everyone from Alec Hate Club just went back and reset. But this is this is this is slow. Yingwei and Loki are gonna be here. Yep, they're gonna be here. The wall is up. Gold Fury. Low and confirmed. Going? So Father's Day get the Gold Fury, but you're forced to use that Ragnarok to get out of the fight. Chase blinks away. Legit in Mario Bro, Gore. You, you, you feel the momentum behind those two now. Four and one on the Jingwei. This Bologna, though, goodness, four zero five. Talk about a battle here in a must-win game two for the Allocate Club. 
I am really... Father's Day is Father's Day's worst enemy. Like, it feels like the, the, the moments that Alec Hate Club have found success, while they have capitalized on it brilliantly, I think that they've done a great job taking those opportunities. They shouldn't have been there to begin with, right? It really does feel like this awkward moment where Father's Day is creating trouble. I mean, the triple kill from Chase earlier that ends because Chase decides to jump back in when the team is responding at their, you know, back camps on right side. And, and, and moments like the Fire Giant where instead of going for the zone or vision, you know, you, you haven't really taken a lot of precautions. You were just hoping to burn it. But, like, the objectives have been going so slow for this squad when, when you don't have, like, Lanky nearby and, and realistically a whole lot of others nearby. Right it does just feel like the, the problems that are happening for them are maybe a little self-inflicted. And Alec Hate Club are doing a great job turning those into wounds but realistically you still got a gold lead you still been doing fine this next fire giant fight you cannot make those mistakes again or allocate club are sending us to three like this will be the thing that can change it you're the team in the lead you need to make the right choices you've got your ults you've got your relics this is where you know your bologna goes in ults down try to find somebody with fin rear try to lock them down for lrn Ideally, keep the Cuckoo ult for a Fire Giant, but if you think you can get a big play in the fight, make that happen. But you have to make sure that it is the right steps. You can't, you know, get picked. You can't find yourself isolated. I'm looking at Baron right now. You need to be not perfect, but about as close to it as possible. Fire Giant brought this game back to interesting for Teal. Sends out a wall and lives. Lots of pressure from Al Kate Club on the support of Father's Day. Spear of the Nine wins. Doesn't quite do enough. Mario Bro starting to stack the damage. It's Lanky obliterated by Al Kate Club. Father's Day trapped inside the Ring of Spears. Freeze out Zephyr. Nice. Here comes Mario Bro and Renown. The carries combined for two. And now Chase on the Brutal Eyes away. Up and over goes Aztec. What has happened this game? from five, six, seven K down. Gore back to Dia siding around the fire giant. Alec, Hate Club are back and they may be in control. I mean, like the first thing I said was don't get picked. And, and when there's a Sobek, that is your challenge. Like that is what you have to be aware of. Cosmic Vibes, you pluck the, the, the Ymir and Vertel just shrugs it off because he's Ymir. You pluck Lanky. Lanky dies. That, that is going to be the goal. And then, I mean, you called it perfectly when it happens, but oh. the damage that Renown has, the CC that Renown has, and combine that with Mario Bro on a late game Gene way, it's everything you need. That's a good return kill from Father of Four. Maybe you can turn it into something a little bit more here if Renown keeps chasing. But you are buying time. You are trying to maintain some semblance of control. This game right now is Alec Hate Club's game. I can't believe we're saying that. If you would have told me that that, that phrase was going to leave our mouths at, at some point in this game, I would have laughed at you. But here we are. And it's Gord it is around that fire giant early in the game. I mean, I'm thinking that's a fine call. But you get it stolen, and then you lose a fight, and then you lose a couple of kills. Father's Day, they have just started bleeding, and it has not stopped from that moment on. I'm sure, you're 3K ahead, but... What does it really matter? He lost MG again. Chase has just not been able to get it done in the last few minutes. Cosmic Vibes is the one who gets pulled back. Not a kill. No, doesn't happen. Everything connects. Father's Day left running. No more ultimates to fight with. And now Mario Bro online fully. Father's Day try, Father's Day fail. And Allocate Club double back to the Ancient Fury. I mean, it should be pretty free. Uh, it feels like outside of the ult from LRN right now, not a lot for Father's Day to, to, to maybe hang on. It feels like, and this is where the Bologna struggles, and I've had this conversation about it in the jungle. I'll have it right here, but by the time Lanky can get to Mario Bro, even with your silence, Mario Bro's more than likely going to smack you two to three times, and some of those are going to be crits. Like, it is going to be difficult. Chase right now has i mean was what five and one then turned five and two off of that one leap in where where he gets too aggressive now is five and four like hasn't been able to find a kill or the presence you want from your fin rear father four has been doing great but there's just not been really a lot of backup it feels like they got so used to playing with the lead they played with their food a little too much they've now lost the lead 
And more than anything, the damage from Renown and Mario, bro, the setup that you're getting from Cosmic Vibes and Aztec, like, Fathers they just aren't combating it super well. They aren't handling it super well. And because wow. of that, they've caught themselves now into this position where their lead's been stripped away. They were doing so well. I mean, look how much of the chart is on their side. To, to imagine that disappearing when you controlled this game for 20 minutes that was going on. I mean, you can't think about it too much right now. You got to keep your head in the game, but you got to imagine that's ringing in the back of their minds. One of the biggest comebacks I've seen in, uh, in, in Smite competitive in general. I mean, you're 10K ahead. And now you're down in gold. It takes a series of errors to get there. One fire giant and a few deaths does not erase a 10k deficit. You have to mistake after mistake after mistake after that. Good news is, see if this pyromancer gets stolen. The stun on the Aztec. Aztec should be killed off here. Is and the pyromancer. Goes over to Father's Day, but, but this is what we've seen. They hang around too long. Chase has not been able to live on the front line shell. Maybe not necessary. I'm not going to do the math on that, but maybe it got stolen. It looks like Aztec picked up a runic bomb. I don't see runic bomb for anyone in Father's Day's back pocket. So, I mean, all right, great. You, you didn't get the pyro, but you got a kill. So a small moment where Father's Day remembers, like, oh, yeah, we can actually kill the other team. Gore, you're going in largely even on golden experience to these next fights but the mental game there for allocate club and, and maybe a bit shaky for father's day and i get to go back to what i was saying because i admittedly 10 minutes ago i didn't think it was going to be a conversation we were going to have i thought we'd be interviewing like somebody Club's... from father's day <laughs> i thought we'd be done Alec hate club has the better late game draft like i like if it's an even fight 27 minutes into the game plus I like their draft more. Legit is able to find picks way easier on a Loki that's late game. Mario Bro actually hits harder. M Renown might be quote unquote more on par, but has more in the kit that matters. I mean, a, a team wide reveal burst damage that you're going to be able to bring to the table uh, along with a, a whole lot of, of CC and visibility. Your team fight is just better if you're Alec Hate Club at this point in the game. Luckily for Lanky, not only does he get to survive getting caught out, but also maybe forces some ults on the other side that you can be happy about. But they've got the better damage carry. They've got maybe a stronger jungle that's oriented around picks specifically. Frontline and setup for Father's Day exists there for sure, but you, you need to find someone like Aztec by themselves. Aztec got picked off a moment ago. Can you kill him quick enough? Yes, you can, but now you got to get out. Stunned from over the wall. It's good enough. All right, so you got to get out. Maybe now you go back to Fire Giant. But LRN, again, I was impressed early with the Spirit of the Nine Winds. I mean, using them so often, I, I've not seen one available for an objective in a little while. Mario Bro has got to get dealt with here because just standing and fighting Lanky. Technically the ADC for Father's Day, but really built more like a solo laner. has got to get it done. What has happened to LRN's health bar? An execute from Renown, but there's still damage to be had. Left in this fight, Renown on a double. Triple freeze from Vertil. Should seal the escape. If it's not one carry, it's the other. And this time, Renown. A couple more kills to get back closer to even. It's not been a good game for the new Wob, but getting that, uh, getting that KDA a little bit better. This is, it's been such a, a wild back and forth between these two teams. And you've kind of said it. I, I think Father's Day are still in a position that they could they could try to fight back. A lot of it depends on this next Fire Giant. And admittedly, with, with the, the Cuckoo down for 20 seconds, Lanky gone for 20 seconds, I think this is Alec Hate Club's in the, the bag, unless something drastically changes. I mean, Fenrir, Baron... Ymir, they're all walking up. They want to try and get something. They they maybe need to make a Hail Mary play here. Tossing the ball in the air. Does anyone catch it? No. They'll back away. Man, are we looking at another game three here? Sure appears that way. Fire Giant taken by Alec Hate Club. They were down by 10K. Now they're up by two. Father's Day have had moments. They had the entirety of the early game. 
And a mistake around Fire Giant has now cost them the 2-0. If the turnaround doesn't happen. Score a big change around how this Fenrir has had to play. It has just not looked comfortable for Chase. Has not been able to jump in. Just gets totally bopped by Mario Bro on this Jing Wei. And it's largely been who Lanky, who's been sent in to try to like backline dive this Jing Wei, and it's just been awkward. Don't have that step back ADC burn because Lanky is is built sort of hybrid. That this hybrid tank Bologna build just don't don't quite have the shred that Allocate Club have. Yeah, it's it's a build that that in a draft kind of that needed to run over early on and. No dead. I mean, yeah, that's the that's honestly that that's that's what's blowing my mind right now. Like I'm, I'm almost speechless. They did everything the draft needed to be successful, except show a little bit of restraint, and and that has put us in a a well, put them I should say, in a terrible position. I mean, now you're fighting against again the Jing Wei that's gonna do a little bit more than your Bologna. You kind of need Allocate Club to make a mistake and and slip up in this siege. Which is possible. You've still got the Phoenixes to work with you. They're not so far ahead that, that it's it's devastating. It just feels like the the series of fight choices. They got so far ahead, they thought they were invincible and then had to pay for it almost instantly. Now, defense-wise, Father's Day have to figure out a way to slow this down. It could be on the back of a Finner. It could be LRN with a massive ult. They got to figure something out. Sure do. These Phoenixes are just starting to burn. Much better game now for Allocate Club than game one. It took a little while to get here. It's got to be pressure on the Jing Wei. Renown is now at the point in the build where you, you ult and you're going to get a chunk of damage anyway. Not pressuring for the Phoenixes, not just yet, our Allocate Club. Wanting to play this one close. Still, some some tier three items to be completed though for for Chase, LRN, for Teal. Still money to be made and and, and money very important. So this has got to be where 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 does Chase's target prioritization lie? I mean, again, the the, the Fenrir is just it's felt awkward. No longer can do no wrong. Whereas for the first portion of this game, couldn't do any wrong. And anywhere the Fenrir went, kills followed. Gore, I, I think Spear to the Nine wins priority for, for LRN is going to be important. They've hit a lot of them. But but it is that risk-reward ultimate right up there with the Searing Pain or a uh, Giannis ult. I mean, you let it swing and you miss. Great. One of the biggest pieces of your kit, now worthless. And so I think that might choose where we fight as well. Alec Hate Club might just choose to avoid the jungle if possible. So it just makes it so much easier for those ultimates to connect. Yeah, especially with the Amir on your side, right? If you're in the jungle and there's the Amir against you, the geometry changes so rapidly, and, and that allows LRN to land easier ults. It allows Lanky to maybe jump in and, and cause some trouble. I agree with you. I like what Allocate Club do. Just kind of avoid taking fights where it's going to favor Father's Day and, and instead show some of this pressure. Maybe even catch people by themselves. I mean, yeah, that plot goes wide, but if Cosmic Vibe smacks that, I mean, it might be GG, right? Just one pick, it opens up so much in terms of siege potential. Here it goes. Could be the final fight. Spear of the Nine wins. I mean, it connects, but it basically does nothing. LRN is low and back in the fountain, but trades out one. Legit dead, but so is LRN. But Phoenix also cleaned up. So jungle for mid and Phoenix. But, 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 but look, I mean, now you're at this point where... Where's your damage gonna come from? I mean, your 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 Kukul Khan is dead. I guess it's Bologna, but but that's hybrid. Th this is brutal for Father's Day. They have been on the back foot, and now they lose their solo laner Gore. Game three lurks, unless we got a miracle play here under the Phoenix. Yeah, you have to have something massive happen, and, and admittedly, you're missing a lot of the facilitators to go for it. I mean, Chase has to go big. Same for Lanky. I'm not sure these tanks care. Watch Alec Hate Club step forward. The execute connects, and you've still got Mario, bro, for all that damage. In go Alec Hate Club. They were down 10k. Backs against the wall. Lives in this tournament on the line, and they somehow flip it around. 
And they're looking like they're gonna take game number two here. Send us on. Respawns in. LRN back from the fountain. This Mario Bro me. dashes away. Speed of the Nine wins, misses. Mario Bro survives. And the game goes on. Allocate Club need just a bit more damage. You can group and dogpile the Titan, but it'll have to be next time as they back away. The good news is they don't have a lot of room they need to cover in order to get there, right? I mean, you're pretty much right where you need to be, except for the Titan being down. And it's just because you've already done a lot of the legwork. Two Phoenixes are gone. The Titans have health. You've got minion waves pushing up and left and mid. You're going to be more than fine. The only way this happens and goes the way of Father's Day is if they can get this Fire Giant before there's their spots, which that is not going to happen. Look at the, the, the placement and, and where Allocate Club are. And you need to not die here. Wow. Mario, bro, goodness. Has just started crushing damage. Aztec in. Might be the final fight of this game. Aztec, yeah, I mean, that's been the target because it's been the only option. But this Odin now far too tanky, and again, there's not enough damage. Hate that from LRN. I mean, send it flying, I guess, but maybe you got enough cooldown in that build. So, so hate was harsh. Hate was harsh. You got a minute left. You're probably not going to fight for the Fire Giant. Let it fly. See what you can get. This game, you know, better not end with that still on cooldown, though, or I may call attention back to it. But a lot more has gone wrong than one Spear of the Nine wins to get Allocate Club back into this game. The old do -si -do, Gore. See if Father's Day can catch someone off guard, but this side of the jungle is so warded. The right side is, you're not gonna catch anyone. Everyone channeling back to base, but but you're just gonna, I mean, you're essentially giving up this right side Phoenix. Yeah, Mario Bros just gonna two-shot this thing. Take your chance, doesn't pay off. Now all three Phoenixes are dead. We might be able to defend left and have it respawn i don't know that you're gonna get more than one bird back up right here though and that that's honestly even optimistic i, I feel like for father's day the defense i mean i mean this is just a, a team comp that doesn't do well for defense and it's because three of them and one of your primary two of your primary damage dealers have to get in the face of allocate club to get their damage out Father of Four is a hybrid build, can still do some decent damage, maybe pull them in for a lot of that lockdown, but you're locked under your Titan right now. You don't really have the wiggle room and, and, and grace to be able to step forward and, and, and allow Bologna and Chase to, to do what they do best. Meanwhile, Cosmic Vibes, I love this, because what do you need to do? You just need a single pluck. That's all you need, and Mario Bro and Renown will make happen for you. Like, they, they will do and deliver anything that you need from that point. Could be the final fight here in this game. Spirit of the Nine wins, is back off of cooldown. LRN makes it count, it's Mario Bro, the perfect target. Is there enough damage for Allocate Club now onto the Titan, back into the fountain for some respawn. But the damage is overwhelming, and the comeback is complete. Allocate Club, send us on to a game three after being down 10k, 10k down in like 15 minutes of game two. And wouldn't you know what? We're going on to game three. There is a lot of good Allocate Club do uh, throughout the end of that. And I said it in picks and pants. Their draft was better late game. It was, it was going to be stronger the longer that went on. That being said, uh, and I don't want to take any praise away from them. That was one of the most incredibly massive throws I have seen from a team. I mean, Father's Day, uh, you had said it, had it all but in the bag. They they are going to carry that weight into game three. Like that that mental weight of knowing you were winning that game, you should have won that game 27 minutes in, is going to carry with them into this. And, and realistically... They're gonna have to be aware of that because if you make plays like that, like you're you're gonna get punished. And if it's happening here in the last chance qualifier, even if you qualify to, to, to playoffs, that's gonna be something that, that needs to be worked on. Today, game threes, our third game three out of four sets. And this one, the most important that, that you could get. Winner goes to playoffs, loser goes home. It's simplified. Mifflin hates it, but I'm gonna call it a best of one. We're down to it. Alec Hate Club Father's Day. A spot in the playoffs awaits, a spot on the couch for the losing team. Game three, right after this.
On to another game three we go, and it's maybe the most important one we've seen here today. They go over an EMEA. They had a game three in their first set. Now was just a promotional game. Mm -hmm. And their equivalent set to this was just a game two. We had a game three that was just a playoff set. And now we go to a game three between Allocate Club and Father's Day that is for all of the marbles. You want to keep playing Smite 2 competitively with us? Better win this one. So look back at uh, at that game two stats here, Gore. But, you know, stats only tell so much of a story, right? I mean, yeah. Father's Day dominated this game for the first 20 minutes. They, they were up like 10,000 gold and then a stolen fire. Inexplicable. You're, you're up so far. You're up so much golden experience. Toss a Hail Mary for some reason on uh, on FG. You lose it. You lose the fight. Then you lose the game. Yeah, it, to the point, like, I, I'm almost willing to say, like, allocate, like, they, they, they shouldn't have won that because there shouldn't have been an opportunity to win that. The fact that they got it is, is a marvel in and of itself. That being said, what they did with the next, what, I guess, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, after they they found that opening was then to just smack down father's day i mean left and right maria Bur like this is the thing and this will always be true bologna as an adc you have some early game capabilities that is going to allow you to match up against a carry probably a little stronger than than, than you should realistically especially a jing Wei who who kind of sucks in the early game yeah instead you let that Jingwei get to the 30 minute mark with gold. In fact, equalize the gold, kind of equalize the gold for him by letting him walk into the fire giant. And then from that point forward, it was kind of easy, right? For, from that point forward, you had the late game damage numbers in your favor more than, than what father's day had. So I feel like it was a, a play diff, that led to the draft diff that that only could have existed if the team was late game and had a lead and father's day gave allocate club a late game lead that, that they never should have had. Uh-huh. Well, Gore, let's find out what happens here. Maybe, uh, maybe a little change up in the ADC department for, uh, for, uh, uh for who was it? Oh, Lanky. Yeah, my brain is fried. Yeah. <laughs> Going to game number three. I, I've realized now so much of it is this time of year. It's like the one, the one day when we get to fall back on our hours. It's so great. Like you get to sleep in that extra hour. And then I realize it's going to be pitch black here at like five o'clock in the afternoon. Yep, it's every like time. Depressing. It's like, it's like I look outside and I'm like, all right, my day's over. And then I look at the clock and it's like 530. And, and I have to like pull myself. Like I look behind me and it's, I mean, it is 730, but. Not so bad. It's like a weird mental thing I have to get over, and it takes me a couple of weeks. Uh, what I'm used to seeing, though, Gore, is Sobek. That's first pick. No surprise there. Uh, Zeus and Athena both taken away. I think Baron had its moments this game. Certainly not the reason they lost, but wonder if Father's Day is going to go back to it. And I certainly would expect to see a more this standard is ADC be here. Fun. Yeah, the most standard ADC that exists uh, in, in Jingwei, plus the Fenrir. Like it already. Don't need to see anything thing else. I like it better for Father. And I'm a huge fan of the My fact that Baron's so gotten left behind. I just, I, I'm, I'm kind of just tired of him. I feel like, and I have to give the credit where credit's due. Father of Four looked really good on that god, despite, I want to say, the, the circumstances that make that god always seem Once not again, that great. Mankind needs and I help. still feel like there's probably a home for him. Like, you could I'm probably so lock him in place. here and feel fine. I just think it's it's you're you're lacking so much, and what you're gaining when you build him hybrid isn't there anymore with the way his scaling has been changed, his numbers have been changed since the first few weeks that he was out. Did you even and know so you definitely fighting? have some room to, to try and make it happen, but I much prefer the 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 correction we're seeing, and it's not like an overcorrection, which I think we saw in, in the first set of NA. Because in NA, it was hey, we did really well game one, game two didn't work, game three we're gonna try something wild, and it didn't work. This time it's like, hey, game one, we dominated. Game two, we I dominated and then done. threw. In game yeah. three, all right, let's just go back to standard and let's just win. Like, And that is what this comp for Father's Day screams to me. Is this is a comp that just wants to win. Yeah, look, I'm cool with that. Especially if, if it, it depends on your mental, though. Can you get, can you take a step back, shrug it off, get back to it. 
Um, LRN went to the Zeus in game two, or uh, game one, went to the Kukul Khan in game two after having the Zeus taken away. I mean, though, those ult score, the, the Spirit of the Nine wins, were hitting, like, from minute one. But you could st you could sense a shift in this game where, towards the end of it, those Spirit of the Nine wins either weren't connecting or they just weren't doing much. They were hitting a lot of tanky targets that kind of just shrugged it off. Um, so I like it. I like the potential. Um, I, I, I like just the general vibe of this draft better, much better. Uh, Alec Hate Club Gore, they're going to stick with, with something similar. They have to go to the CERN instead of the Jing Wei, but Sobek Odin, about as tanky and, and strong initiators as you get. CERN Nuwa, standard in, in, your, in, your, uh, in your damage dealer department. Feels like these teams are like, all right, we're going to take a step back, take a deep breath. We're going into game three. Let's not be too crazy. Um, and it might just come down to execution. Really, and I, I think you're you're very much right. I think there are a lot of things. Both of these teams have some some capabilities to really, 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 really dial up the the mid game. Late game, I I, I think balances out. The Jingwei is definitely going to take a little while, but maybe we'll get to see something. I, I don't know. I'm keeping my eyes on Kern and Finrear for this one. In we go. Game number three. Do or die. Winner goes on. Loser goes home. Here in the Smite 2 Founder Series. In the last chance qualifier. This is the last, last chance qualifier. We appreciate you guys sticking with us all day long. Could be a first blood. Brutal start for Father's Day. Vertil, though, knocks himself away. Awkward. But awkward <laughs> is okay. As long as you don't die. Father's Day keeps their support on the map. Yeah, I honestly think, uh, and, and and we've seen a lot of those little little moments. It, they've been happening less and less to the point where I look forward to them even more now, just because it's it's very exciting uh, when you have that opening, you have that opportunity. But like you said, nothing happens; it fizzles out. <laughs> so yeah. instead, actually, maybe better overall for for everybody involved. Father's Day it happens early enough that the Ymir not only doesn't get picked, but also gets to back and heal up. So you're not even walking into lane at a deficit father of all goes back to to this bologna which was a absolute menace it's so hard to remember because it was like well over an hour ago it feels like um that bologna was solid it was mm -hmm. so good in fact for father of four and so i i like going back to this i think you're in a lane where you could actually maybe leverage a little bit of bullying right between the bologna and the finner you probably have enough damage to, to hurt an odin but you're going to have to get it in the first few levels specifically because the leap, the shield, like he's just got too much going for him by the time you, you get to level like five, that there's not going to be as much that you can, you know, lean on as a Finn or a Bologna to really try to bully him. Meanwhile, Loki, I think has a lot of opportunities as well. I, I think this Jing Wei, while she's very safe, doesn't have a lot going for her in the early game. I, I think you can say the same in both mid lane case, the new Wah and the Cuckoo pretty easily ganked not surprising to me that now i look up and see the junglers near mid lane because i feel like that's going to be where they can find a lot of their bread and butter maybe they'll fight one another god bread and butter sounds real good right so about. good right <laughs> nice, nice piece of sourdough warm butter on top oh, i have a friend who makes some sourdough and they, they let us have like a like a slice every once in a while not a whole loaf you know that, that's that's giving away gold um, that's what I'm craving. It's the tape that's just crisp enough where you almost <laughs> cut the roof of your mouth on it, you know? Um, but soft enough that you don't. And that's that's the key. So now you got me thinking about bread and butter. And I gotta well, you've got me thinking about sourdough. Cause it, it, one of my favorite, like, lunches and snacks involves sourdough and cheese. And, and sometimes, I guess, you can make little little pizzas out of them, too. So. Yeah. It's like adult Lunchables. You know, you grow up and you... you get fancier bread and fancier cheese and do, do you like boar's head cell yeah. <laughs> not a sponsor by the way if you want to though boar's head reach out but yeah. it's, it essentially sell what is the oh. equivalent of an adult oh. Oh. oh father of four oh and lives aztec oh my god imagine the the devastation we've all had those moments you're like oh my god i don't know where the jungler is but i'm going in i got enough damage it's gonna be first blood this is gonna be great and then you lose the kill by like 10 HP, and then the opposing jungler shows up and kills you. That's it. That's a mental check if I've ever seen one. 
Great start though for Father's Day. Flip around the uh, the almost solo kill. Turn it into a 2v1, turn it into a first blood for Chase. Who I did, I had no question marks for this Fenrir in game one or in game two until the end of the game. It wasn't Chase's fault. It was just so brutal to try to jump in to that Jingwei. So I expect another good early game here from Father's Day. Yeah, you just, you've set yourselves up for a, a good start and immediately first blood onto your jungler. That's, that's a, that's a massive win. I, I mean, in and of itself. And it's on a Fenrir as well. So you get to, to really start to lean into the, the aggression. Which they've dominated, I mean, the early game, three times in a row. They have been the early game team. And so that is the place that I am maybe leaning a little a little more towards. Uh, just in slightly in favor of, right? They are a team, or a god, I should say, in the Finrare at that level four, level five. You can get a lot done. You just need to make sure no one falls behind. I mean, father of four ganked again. This time, will have the support of this jungler yet again. Chase is the healthiest blink in. And there's still an ultimate, but got used by Father of Four. Oh no, is he gonna live again? No, Renown in on the counter gank. Chase is gonna steal away the blue buff. Maybe a bit of a bait here. Certainly has the damage. And down he goes. Picks up the blue buff, brutalized back through. Guess why? LRN is here. But it's a what is this? Four? There are four members of Allocate Club over here on the right side of the map! And wow, Father's Day, oh, they nearly got a kill. These are just brutal. The shielding keeps Aztec alive. This time, LRN left running. Three men chasing him down. Should be another here for Allocate Club. Three on the board and a double kill for the new one. I mean, just well done, well executed. And, and first off, to pull back like what, what should have been... In my mind, Chase getting ahead and, and leading the way. Now you even get aggressive on the current. And this is something you can only do uh, on the current. Like, Mario Bro couldn't have done a play like that, couldn't have stepped forward. And, and maybe it's not this, this crazy, oh my god, you've turned the game around. But, like, being able to be aggressive, you also get so many kills. And this is the very important part, as you highlighted, onto the new wall uh, Renown. And this god today, in general, has been so good. And now you are in a, a better spot. You're ahead of the Cuckoo Clan. You have decent self peel. Like, a Finra jumping on you needs to be prepared for you to stun him with Clay Soldiers. Or, in an ideal world, to wait those out and hope that they that, that cooldown isn't thrown at his direction. Instead, you're, you know, hunting the, the Loki in certain circumstances like this. Or, you're finding the new Wa kind of in between those big, big moments. Instead... Kind of a shaky attempt at getting something started there by, by Chase, but I like to see that the pressure is still on usually, and it is not uncommon to get smacked by a, a three-man turnaround like that and then pretty much not have any impact, any faith. You don't really move forward. You're not really pushing. There's, there's a lot of times we'll see something like that happen and you just turn to farm, and then it turns into this kind of boring, slow, and, and really unaffected... I'm going to farm up and try to be ahead of you. Meanwhile, the Loki just gets to continue finding ganks. So I like to see that Chase is still trying to put pressure on. Need to do it. You're still slightly ahead in the gold department. So we're all good for now. Mario bro, safe and sound. Many pair tier one tower. Every moment of this game just feels, feels so important. Gank in a mid. Chase takes a tower shot. Ragnarok used out and away. Lurking in the water. Falls underneath and Father of Four drops over in solo. Finally, Aztec gets some payback. That, that first blood drop felt terrible, but since then, Aztec has assisted three times and Father of Four has died a couple. Is, is this the Fury throw all over again? Father's Day started up while I'm off. Who gets it? It's Father's Day. But are you going to give away kills in the meantime? Vertil sure should go down. Vertil should go down, but he doesn't. He lives. Chase back in on the fight. And Father's Day is damage. What in the world is going on? Chase shrugs it off. But Aztec has a spear for him. Fury, two kills and only give up one for Father's Day. And I thought they were going to get mopped in that team fight. And it was the exact opposite and a great play for the Chaos side. I mean, well executed again. 
And more specifically, admittedly, you probably wish Chase could have gotten out of there, right? You, you would prefer your jungler to stay alive over everybody else. But the fact that they stay alive so long, the fact that they are able to stay so, I, I want to say, aggressive without being punished for it. I mean, they just do such a good job uh, of kind of ring around the rosy, staying alive. Admittedly, again, not as clean overall as it could be. You still drop some kills at the end of the day. You, you still have some, some, some players on Allocate Club who right now are probably just as confident as they should be, but you can see the experience shift still in favor of Father's Day. Level up, level up, same, level up, level up, right? Everybody's leading just a little bit, and that kind of play can leverage into not just a Fury, but, but maybe a little bit more. Now you can take a, a small gold lead, try to cultivate it into something a little more, right? Water it, give it some sunlight, see where it's going to go from here. And a lot of that's going to be Chase, kind of driving the factor, especially like over here in Duo. Up, down, into the Polymorph, however, should be a simple one. And it is Ragnarok to gobble up on that final bit of damage. Gore, you, I mean, you sound like a herbologist there. You have a green thumb. <laughs> you, you much of a farmer, a grower? Not so much. The opposite, yeah. I think anything in my care would probably die. Um, my mother, Really good at taking care of plants. Yeah. My you know, sister, really good at taking care of plants. It skipped me. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that's how genetics works. You know, one one family doesn't need all herbologists. You know, they they got to get someone with a different skill set. Otherwise, you know, like back in the day, an entire family doesn't need to be planters. You know, you would have to go out and do some hunting for it. Anyway, that was my <laughs> apology lesson up. Uh oh. Is Renown, and again, escaping, but no, gotta be a kill for LRN. Sure is. Zephyr looks like there's enough damage there. One for one trade over in mid. Rateel tosses up the wall, but gets plucked back. Not much mana left for a legit Aztec is in to make up the difference. Two for one trade for Alec Hate Club now over in the mid lane. These teams, they have scrapped it, has been awkward. Ever so slight of a lead, though, still for Father's Day. Honestly, it's it's such an awkward spot. The longer this game goes, so right now it's still a good lead to, to try and build up. Foundational. It is a lot smaller than <laughs> they have done uh, in the past, right? So I, I definitely, and, and maybe desperately, like, am not as, as confident in what they're going to be able to do with it. I'm looking at this Gold Fury respawn. I'm looking at their team fight. That's where my eyes are going to be because they are a team that I feel like, especially, and this is Father's Day specifically, with LRN, you have a lot of capabilities to get something done, but they're really focused on the fights. I actually really like this aggression over on right. Aztec. It's had a good start to this game. Two, one, and three, but one level down. Father of four. Probably tired of babysitting. Needs a little uh, babysitting of his own. Needs jungler over there. Chase in. Eagles rally. Double stun, but Aztec sends out the ring of spears. That makes things awkward for this father of four. Chase, chased down by Legit and others. Allocate Club back on the board. In the meantime, there's a Gold Fury pulled to everyone from Allocate Club over on the right side of the map. I think Father's Day will get this one, and Gore, ultimately, I think Father's Day will trade one kill for a Gold Fury most of the time. Yeah, I mean, that is um, the classic. Normally, the, I guess the, the true classic is kill your support, we get the Gold Fury. Now you get a nice little little supplemental kill, uh, and that? that balances out. What, jungle for jungle, right? And, and legit, no offense to Chase, but is worth way more right now. The 2 1 and 6 Loki that have not died versus the 2 4 and 3 Vinrier. Yeah, that's way more worthwhile to get. If you can get Renown, this would be so huge. Renown just so slippery. Game 1, brutal on the new wall, but great positioning in game 2 and then so far here in game 3. Still has the. It should be okay. I mean, this would be a crazy, crazy chase for Chase. Said it's just gonna be a speed buff invade cosmic vibes in as well. Are we gonna collapse and fight over this? What in the world is going on here in game three? Normally, game three slow down. This one has picked up the pace. Allocate Club drop a few kills a few minutes ago, but now pick it back up. But Gore, 
They are 4,000 gold down. What has happened? They're in the lead with kills. But the farm go, has go, go, just go, 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 been brutal. Gold Fury! That's the answer, right? <laughs> you get a second Gold Fury. And you're playing aggressively. And like you said, they're up in kills. They're up by three in kills. But the farm, the neutral camps are all going the way of Father's Day. Which to me is the sign of a strong team. And you're also seeing moments like this. You get that gold fury, you kill Chase. Well, oh, they killed legit, and they get a little bit of a shutdown. Father of Four has warranted two people to come over here and try to kill one, and still almost killed another one. And that was after he took down Aztec. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't like, oh, we're in a 4v1 and he got one lucky kill. It was like, no, he soloed somebody, and now he almost soloed another one of you while he's in a, a 2v1. And what you're seeing, I think, is Alec Hate Club, and, and this is happening because Fathers Day are bringing the fight to them. But while they are, are sometimes winning them and maybe getting the kills consistently, five of those kills, half of them, are on this Fenrir, who's a level down and whose entire job right now isn't to be the kill supreme guy. Like He's, he's not meant to, to, to be this carry. He's got one-fourth of what's going on, but he jumps in. He stuns. Guess what they do with that stun? LRN and Lanky, they deal damage. Then he picks him up with Ragnarok. Guess what? Then it's LRN and Lanky. It's not as extreme as like an Athena if you're you're playing that, and that's what we saw in game one for Chase. But it's very similar in that when you're not six and zero as a Finrare and the, the sole survivor, the, the one guy getting it done on your team, you're still able to find kills. You're still able to pick up a ton of damage, and I, I don't want to, to, to counter any of that, but at the same time, a lot of your job is set up. It is going to be control and, and lockdown, and that's what you're bringing here. Pyromancer confirmed by Father's Day. 7,000 gold almost down now. To brutalize it in mid, Cosmic Vibes dashes out. Should be fine for the time being. Father of Four sends an Eagle's Rally up. Ring of Spears in. Double freeze in the wall. It's great from Vertil. You set up for your team, but you have the damage, Ooh. not just yet. These health bars have been lower without reaching zero than I've maybe seen in recent smite history. Chase has got to go over the wall and get it done just out of range of the tower on the stun. Stands and fights LRN, supporting his jungler. I don't think that's going to be quite enough. Vertil plucked back once more. And after all that, just the one kill. But hey, guess what? It's in favor of Father's Day, and that means even more gold. Mining their pockets. And it's such a timer. I kind of wish, I mean, they, their, their health bar is a little too low. Maybe with Lanky, you could have done it. There was an opportunity to potentially go for the, the third Fury here. But I appreciate patience, uh, especially after game two. I, th I, I think I appreciate it more than anything for Father's Day. So you get a little reset. You fall back. You get to spend some of that gold. It's manifested pretty beautifully into to items. Nothing's changed too drastically when you, you look down at the builds. I feel like the Cuckoo, Cuckoo Khan is who my eyes are, are on maybe the most. I'm going to eat a charm picked up by, by Vert, and, and that's something I haven't seen in, in a, a long time. Not necessarily out of, oh, it's bad. It just feels like there's been a lot that's that's heavily prioritized over it. And realistically, it could be pretty good in these circumstances because, like, the thing that has killed Father's Day more than 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 anything is their over aggression and i feel like amanita charm kind of enables you to, to to be a little extra aggressive and not pay for it because you happen to get uh, covered by a little extra healing on the top this is gonna be the third fury of the game for father's day now, all right has spirit of the nine wins imagine you can use that to confirm an objective and grab a kill it does neither for teal snags the first one for father's day now it's a 5v4 He'll step forward, Allocate Club, gotta find some damage here because again, this one's starting to slip away from them a bit. Renown, healthy in the back line, Aztec is as well. Cosmic Vibes detonates Father of Four. You stand at a one for one, legit down, Father of Four follows. The Fury's still on the map. This Fury, maybe the pressure around it, I mean, losing one for one, I'm going to still favor, I, I don't know, the experience of Father of Four, like being level 15 specifically, not like him being an experienced Father of Four, which I'm sure probably gives you some sort of life experience that I've never had to, to deal with. 
But the fact that he's level 15, getting that kill probably means a little more than the low key. If you kill off Renown here, though, this would be massive. LRN, it's this this Ooh. really rough spot. Oh, man, How? you're so close. What is Renown, going on this game? I don't know. what. I think Renown has a secret passive. I don't know if, if we could, but something underneath the new wall that, that gets Renown out in sub 100 HP scenarios when they shouldn't. Like, that is absolutely wild how often that's happened. I have never seen more low health bars that have not turned into kills than I have here in this game. Fitting for a must-win type of game. Father's Day. If you can keep this pace, you're going to be in a good spot. I, I just... I can't believe what has happened with, with the kills and with the gold. They have just farmed much more effectively. Could be three out of three on the gold fury. There is contest over Malakate Club. Again, from LRN, Spirit of the Nine wins doesn't quite connect, but again, it doesn't matter. Two kills for Father's Day. Starts the fight. It's a shutdown, and now back to the gold fury. Renown gets something done. You've, you've used some of that tick damage early. That'll just about do it here. Father's Day, two kills, three gold furies. And it'll be just about a 6,000 gold lead. Can I do math? Thank you, Doug. Goodness gracious, I was so far off. What, what am I looking at? If you 9,000 gold. <laughs> look, if you hang upside down. Yeah, let me hang upside take, down. And, uh, like for me specifically, take your glasses off. A six and eight and a nine all look pretty similar, you know? Yeah, what the heck am I doing here? <laughs> it's late. We've casted six games of Smite in a row. I'll give ourselves a bit of a break. Uh, but at an eight, nearly 9,000 gold lead for Father's Day is the correct number. But Gore, it was around the fire giant where things got iffy with a 10,000 gold lead. You're right. I, yeah, you're right. You, uh, buckle up. We're in for a long run. 9,000 9, <laughs> is nothing compared to what Allocate Club have had to go up against this set. They have a way better draft than they yeah, have. Yeah, much better. Lanky, I, 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 like I mean, this is a, a, a draft. Like, you could take make the exact same mistakes in game two right now. And the, like, let's say the Fire Giant. Let's say you 50-50 a Fire Giant. Which was kind of the start of the troubles. And I guess, what was it? Maybe a couple of kills? You throw that over the way of Allocate Club. You, you, that narrows this down to, let's call it 6,000. If it's a, a good lead and a good Fire Giant, they knock down a tower. The good news is, after that, you've got a late game Jing Wei. Like you've got a you've got a fin rear. You've got so much. You've got this capability. I mean, look at this. But like, you just absolutely shredded it. I don't know that LRN needed to ult there as well. That was no, probably I mean, a little extra and, and kind of useless. But it, it it shows that they have the strength and the capability to fight right now. And they have the DPS. I mean, look how much faster this fire giant. They did half its health bar in like a sixth of the time. They they managed to do anything else in the objectives in games too. Yep. Fire Giant, easy for Father's Day this time. We can take a bit of a deep breath. Should, should now be a, uh, a more frictionless road for them. 10,000 was the, the master, the mystery mark. We just eclipsed it, but in a much better spot here with the composition as we've discussed and actually getting the Fire Giant. So now it's the same question, Gore. I, I'm not sure how you deal with this Jing Wei. It's been a been what I feel like to be a set winner, game winner, maybe, these last couple of games. Mikey at 306, well underway in this build, and an entourage to step forward with. Still a good look though for Father of Four. Top damage on the team. Been uh, a fun solo lane, really. I mean, this entire set, Aztec versus Father of Four, has been filled with drama, it feels like. Uh, and, and an absolute treat to watch these two go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, this is one that I think as a, a whole, solo lane has, has provided a lot of the entertainment. I'm going to answer, uh, I guess it was kind of a question. The Wait, First off, three levels up. I didn't even realize that Mario Bro uh, ain't nothing right, right now yeah. compared to the Wei. That is insane in terms of a lead. Unfortunate for the Kernanos. And realistically, how do you deal with a late game Jing Wei? And, and the answer to that, is kind of what Fathers they did in game two. We've seen more of it in the past. In fact, I'd actually say the, the best strategy for dealing with a late game Jing Wei, we actually saw against a solo lane soul 
in game three of the first set in North America, which is you just camp her. You just go over there and ruin her life. You can make her miserable. You make her hate everything, her existence, all of it. And when a Jingwei is one in five, and even with a, a lead, even though the rest of the team is doing incredibly well, you strip away so much uh, of what they have. And I'd maybe see more of it in the net worth, but like even just by, by looking at the experience, you can tell the Jingwei has done so much. It's 4,000 of the gold. 4,000 of the lead is in, on the Jingwei by itself over the Kernanos. If you had, had spent time and invested time in shutting her down, that's maybe where you find it. The downside is, and this is where it gets hard, it's Jingwei. She's super difficult to gank, especially after level 5. It's just so hard to, to find it uh, in, in a spot where you don't feel safe. Same thing, I mean, you, you've got a Ymir next to you as well. So you've got like one of the best peelers with one of the best survivable carries and a Loki that would have to dive incredibly deep and get incredibly lucky to get those kills. Like Father's Day in the draft did a really good job with the duo lane. Justin having a carry who can, can do a lot and stay alive while doing it. And at this point, get incredibly far ahead to get the job done. Is the clock a bite, a bite about to strike midnight? For, uh, for Alec Hate Club. It's a bit of a fairy tale in game number two. I'm thinking game number three, a bit more comfortable for Father's Day. Alec Hate Club need to make some magic happen. Opposite, Chase again lives. No, no, he lives again. How many, how many do I have to watch get away with red HP? It's been too many, too many this game. And one more, add it to the pile, Chase lives. Renown hates to see it. In the meantime, mid and left, Phoenix is taken care of. Allocate Club Gore, they, they cannot buy a defense right now. They have fallen You're right, Phoenix maybe just too far behind. Honestly, losing that ultimate from around, like the, the ult itself isn't maybe the big game changer, but like that, that damage that could spread across everybody and, and maybe find the setup. Chase getting out, yeah, that, it just hurts. It hurts so much. And there are a lot of moments like, Game two, Chase don't get out of those. <laughs> that's, that's maybe that moment where Renown sees the light, knows you can make this play. It's finally here. And that, that, that crumbles at least a little bit. For me, that would crumble the mental. And, and you know, yeah. you feel a little less overall. I feel like this is a, a really good god on the, the new one. You should have good damage. And your defense should be solid, but that moment and, and forcing that reset and things going that way and that wrong, where are you going to defend? I mean, you've, you've got it, but where do you step up? Where do you try to? I mean, all your phoenixes are gone. Do you go for the, the fire giant when you're you're almost 20,000 down? Like, I mean, that's that feels like a death sentence in and of itself. But if the alternative is fighting in your titan room, I don't know if you really have that many other options. If you had two phoenixes up, even one Phoenix up, you could probably forego this Fire Giant and, and just bank as much as you possibly could on the defense. It'd be risky, but you could. Mm -hmm. With no Phoenixes up, your options are take the fight in neutral ground and hope for the best. Take the fight under your base where they could just ignore you and kill the Titan. Take it in neutral ground. Step forward, do exactly what they're doing. Find a fight, find the vision, get some ground in the jungle. Maybe even find a pick on Father of Four, but do something to try and lock down Father's Day away from the Titan so that you have a chance of winning anywhere, let alone trying to, to defend the Titan and get the kills. Time to find out now. Can Allocate Club pull one more rabbit out of the hat? Could be. Nice star, Chase into the Ragnarok, but lives yet again, oh my god! But there's still a ganker on the backside happening. A messy, messy fight, this is awkward. Father of Four separating out three members of Allocate Club, Aztec jumps away. Could be enough for the time being, just to secure this Fire Giant. Oh man, Chase was so low. And Father's Day are sticking on this FG. LRN still has the secure, gotta feel comfortable when you have a Kuku Khan. Ready to let that ultimate go, and, and LRN just left alone on the FG now. Gotta be it! And yes, indeed, Father's Day. It's awkward, it's messy, it's scary. But Fire Giant, maybe the game-winning Fire Giant, 20,000 gold ahead for Father's Day in a game three that would send Alec Hate Club out of the Smite 2 Founder Series.
And this is a good spot to be in if you are looking to to kind of showcase it. And, and I think Flex, like, you needed something to wipe game two from, from not just my mind, the viewer's mind, from your own minds. Like, you needed a game this strong, and you need to finish it strong. And it's for the damage things yeah. to go in there as well. Father's Day are starting to knock the dominoes over. And if this has been happening all game long, Chase will not die. Aztec's low as well, but it does not matter. Game three, playoffs, hello, Father's Day. Send Alec Hate Club packing and get it done cleanly in game three. I will admit a little bit of surprise, and this is actually part of the reason the format of the Founder series is so fantastic and it's been so fun to watch because the the place we're at, right? We're in stage three for this last chance qualifiers. But you go back to, to Alec Hate Club and look at their path, you know, playing in those first couple of weeks, qualifying for Swiss, playing through Swiss, not the team you'd expect to get eliminated when you put them in a matchup against the team that came from open bracket. But that was the reason the open bracket existed in the first place was for teams who maybe yep. weren't sure those first couple of weeks if they were going to compete and play to show up, form and practice, slam whatever they could and, and push forward. And that's exactly what they've done here. I mean, Father's Day from five weeks of open bracket into this last chance qualifier. Now moving on to playoffs, that is a huge, huge deal for them. And yep. again, I, I was saying it at the end there, you needed an, an absolute knocker of a game. Like you needed this to, to go out of the park yep. with how well you played it. And they did. I, I think everybody had something to be proud of in this one. And all three games, their early game was phenomenal. Their mid game was phenomenal. Yep. And their late game, outside of like uh, realistically only a couple mistakes was fantastic the draft played against them in game two if they had this draft in the same mistakes they would have won game two and, and so i think maybe there's something to be learned about you know some draft styles potentially definitely something to be learned about the play and, and maybe pulling back on the reins a little bit and, mm -hmm. and, and i think they should watch uh before playoffs kick off watch back the footage for game two and and you know do a lot of pause vod you know review for themselves to just see what went wrong but take that knowledge then into to playoffs and play like they did in game three and in game one and and i i have a feeling this team could could surprise us actually yeah really like what i saw out of chase today uh, i think lrn also played a really consistent God, brand yeah. of smite um i i think that the kukul khan i mean it's not easy the problem is, like that's the type of pick that you zoom in on we zoom in on with a microscope because it all it all funnels through that one that one alt. I'm you know really what I mean? harsh like, on Kukul Khan's. Like it is absolutely. wild how mean I am to them. <laughs> well, it's like you pick it for this one thing, and so it's the one thing we look out for. But it really, there's all this other benefit to uh to to locking in that god. It was LRN who played it uh, in games two and three, and it's LRN that we'll now talk to for the post game interview. Uh, LRN, can you hear us? Good and clear. Yes, sir. All right, yes, sweet sir. LRN. Uh, first of all, congrats! What a set Thank that you very was. Much. Uh, Gore and I losing our losing our voices a bit over here. I'll speak for myself. <laughs> it's me. Uh, I, I'm going to start off with a slight negative, and then we can move into the positive. Uh, course, talk to me right. about game two. Uh, it feels like a big lead. So for, uh, for the Father's Day squad, and and what goes wrong? So with our draft, we kind of need to win early. So <laughs> I think I think the fact that we kind of played around a little bit too much we kind of forced sure. the the fire without my ultimate and then we went and took like 2v3s 2v4s etc all around the map that it kind of just allowed them to get back and they outscale us so we just end up losing without mm -hmm. a hunter so that was our uh adjustment for game three is just yeah. pick a hunter uh, i noticed uh because I, I think it happened last week as well when we watched you guys but like linky likes to go towards you know some of like the the like warrior styles like playing the Bologna over in the long lane. Like what is that? So now I'm actually kind of curious from your perspective. Is that something y'all like? Is that something that you let him do? Like what brings those forward? <laughs> okay. So if you look at game one from our set last week. Yeah. We just stomped and rolled over them. Went, mm -hmm. Or did the, the stolen gold fury and getting behind. But once we started to pick up the pace again, we just rolled them over. So in, and, and we had like the, the scuff siege, but like that's but once we get going we kind of just can roll them over with it so mm -hmm. the fight isn't close but once they catch up and they outscale us it kind of turns bad yeah <laughs> lrn final thoughts from you here um give, give me a vibe check here obviously this one you qualify to playoffs do you feel like you guys are playing some of your best smite is there room to improve what should we expect from father's day come playoffs next weekend 
Uh, I think that there's a lot of room to improve, but I think we've been playing down from what we have been playing in scrims. So I think if we play up to what we're playing in scrims, we could shock some teams, but yep. that's what I'd say. Yeah, it's an exciting, uh, exciting team to watch. Hell of a set, and what a way to end our day. Congrats, LRN. Excited to see what you guys get done uh, next weekend. And Thank you very much. Sure thing. Gormizer, it's a big one here for uh, for Father's Day. They're able to close things out. And I'm glad, look, every once in a while, our read and our analysis is a bit off from how, like, the players and the pros and the top one percenters will will read it. I'm glad that for game two, it's like they didn't have a hunter. And that, that was what we kept harping on. And LRN there in the post game is like, yeah, we just didn't really win fast enough. We needed a hunter later in the game. And that's what we adjusted for game three. Um they did about everything else correct there in that game too. Yeah. But but that 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 retrospective uh kind of post mortem for them I think will be helpful in, mm -hmm. in moving forward. It has a lot of uh of, I mean he said it perfectly, right? Where it is uh a style of draft that when it gets ahead and and I gotta give them a ton of credit. I, I can't believe their early game is so consistent that they were ahead all three games this time around. Yeah it's not something that you get to see too often. Like usually in, even in best of three, like at least one game you get kind of trounced. Like it just falls apart for you somewhere. They were so incredibly consistent with it that it's something that with most teams, I don't think I could ever advocate for it, but like the way they play facilitates that play style that as long as you don't slip up late game, like we saw in game two, normally it does just mean you roll over them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good look look and, and it's what we saw early in uh in the smite 2 founder series play aggressive catch the team off guard and see what you can get done uh take a peek at the north american bracket if you will because we have now completed group a and group b we have sent garf's goblins gote five yummers and father's day on to the playoffs we will finish up group c tomorrow so congrats to Gote Five. Uh, earlier on, Gore, we saw them lose in Game Three to Garf's Goblins, and they beat Content Team Six. Coincidence? Irony? I'm not sure. Five greater than six, I guess, in uh, in that final match in Group A. Uh, and then we just watched Father's Day take the two-one win over Alec Hate Club. Heck of a set. And then tomorrow we'll be uh, we'll be watching Mr. Play by Play versus Kitty Party, and then the loser of that will move on to play the Throat Punch Studio. Great gonna, name. Great name, but I don't want to go there. Uh, and then first name, Zach Buff Uller. Obviously, loser will move on to roll the dice. So it'll be a similar schedule tomorrow uh, where, where North America will play one match that is not a promotion and a knockout. But the loser will, will still have a chance to qualify later on. Then the second match that we watch tomorrow in North America will be the same weight as this one. Winner goes on, loser goes home. Fun way to end the Saturday, Gore. I mean, it was a bit of a long one. Cast six games of Smite in a row, but they were six fun games of Smite. Uh, and 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 when you when you get one like this, where you're starting to lay the groundwork for Smite Two Esports and tell some stories, and 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 you're starting to get closer to playoffs, the weight's a little bit heavier. Uh, I really enjoyed ending on this note. Yeah, I think they gave us they gave us a hell of a show, and they gave us something to talk about. Uh, which doesn't happen a lot in games like that, where, where typically you find someone that, that has such a, a dominating control, which last week they did. And uh, maybe, who knows, maybe next week they will as well. Uh, it's not often that you get to have such a, an interesting time with it. It feels like a lot of the times I'm actually going to use Mr. Play by Play and Throw Punch Studio from last week as an <laughs> example, because like that was so one sided that you're doing your best from our perspective to make it yeah. entertaining. These guys made it entertaining. It always makes it more yeah, fun for us. Well, tomorrow it'll be the same schedule. Make sure to tune in, I believe, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. We'll yep. do the EMEA and then another EMEA set around 1, give or take, depending on how on the first set. And then North America will start again at 3 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock for our second set. Uh, that is day one of two of our last chance qualifiers. As I just listed, we got some great smite for you tomorrow. We appreciate you guys tuning in, sticking it out with us. Had a long day of smite two today. Another big one for you tomorrow. Teams move on. Teams go home. Plenty of drama to be had. So on behalf of myself, Gormizer, with the other casters, everyone back in production, thanks for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow. Made in Georgia.